Beyond Salt Marsh is a game played by adults and recorded for an adult audience. Sometimes we use adult language and explore adult topics. Consider yourself warned. Hello, everybody. Hi, I'm Dave, your humble dungeon master. And on this stream on Wednesday nights, we play Beyond Salt Marsh, which is a super fun uh, campaign set in the Greyhawk campaign setting of Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, typically, we would be launching into another episode, but tonight we're actually going to take a retrospective approach and we're going to dive back and explore a little bit about our very first season, which started seems like a long, long time ago. Uh, I am lucky tonight to be joined with two of the folks in our current campaign who have been with us since the very beginning, Andy and Chad. Hey, guys. Hello. Hey, Hi, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the recap episode, I guess, is what we're calling it. <laughs> so here we are. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Cheers, fellas. Cheers. Let's go. You've, you've, you've been here since the, the very beginning, more or less. Um, it's been a long road. Or has. a lot of changes, anyway. Yeah. There have been a lot of changes. <laughs> there have been uh, a lot of shenanigans. And we're going to talk a little bit about season one. And, and I mean, the conversation tonight is pretty fluid. We can, you know, if it, if it bleeds into season two or season three to provide context uh, or, you know, the idea of sort of that retrospective look back at things that happened in the first season, I think that's, that's great. Um, I think uh, it'll be fun. But before we get there, I want to make a couple of announcements. Uh, and I know Chad, you have an announcement to make too, but let me let me do mine first. Um, once again, we are super super honored and uh, and just we feel so grateful that we have a sponsor for this this stream, uh, CZRPG. They create and publish a variety of really cool content for Fifth Edition Dungeons and Dragons, including settings, adventures, map packs, player options. Uh, and they even do custom map making. Uh, I saw that on their YouTube channel recently. They posted a really cool uh, time lapse video of, of some incarnate work. So if you're into incarnate mapping, you might want to check that out. Um, check them out at czrpg.com. Um, tonight, as part of the sponsorship, we will be giving away a digital copy of the Ultimate Naval Map Pack, which we actually used a little bit of in last week's episode there are some really cool uh, maps of archipelagos, beaches, docks, a couple of different uh, styles of sea maps that you can use for ship-to-ship -ship combat or, um, you know, like uh, sunken treasure type stuff. It's, it's really cool. He's also got a bunch of boat tokens, and that's what we used last week. The boat almost was, um, I guess, capsized, you'd say, but our heroes did a hell of a I'm job of boat. getting themselves. I'm on a yacht. Da -da -da -da. Um, is there a yacht? Uh, you'll have to find out. You'll have to buy the map pack to find out if there's a yacht. Uh, Christian, we need to get a yacht in there really quick if you're watching. All right. Um, so in order to win tonight's giveaway, which is the Ultimate Naval Map Pack from czrpg.com, uh, go ahead and enter the code word czrpg. Pretty straightforward. Into the chat here uh, over or wherever it is over there. Uh, enter that in there. We will select one lucky winner at the end of tonight's stream. I don't really know if we're going to go three hours. It might be an early stream. I don't know. We're going to find out. Stick around because you do have to be here to win. Um, if you are sort of anxious and want to check out the Naval Map Pack over on uh, Drive Through RPG, Chad, point to your left. Stage or left like, or, or my left? Um, your left. Stage left. There we go. Is that stage left? Yeah, that's stage left. I'm pointing to my God, right. It's so confusing. Point to your right. See, see where Chad's pointing. Chad, you can see that right there. I'm sure there's a oh, URL. Oh, hey, I'm on Twitch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there's a URL there. <laughs> Bitly.com/slash/naval-guild. Use that code or that uh, URL to go check out the map pack. It's pretty epic. Uh, we think you'll like it. We're honored to have uh, Christian and his team as our sponsors for this stream. And like I said, enter the code word CZRPG into the chat, and you will be entered to win the giveaway. Uh, yeah. Chad, why don't you uh, why don't you give us a, a super sweet update? Hey, it's me, North Shore DM. Tomorrow we're gonna be playing Midwinter Keening. 
if you caught last week's episode, you will know that the party has found themselves in a bit of a uh, a pickle. A, a person could call it a pickle, right? They're in a bog. <laughs> it's never a good idea. It's winter time. They're tracking down some bandits. But wait, there's bog zombies. So that's a thing that they're going to have to deal with. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm excited. I love, evidently, I love these like insane combat cliffhangers. Like, oh, it's the end of the session. This something crazy happens. Um, I'm excited. It's going to be a lot of fun. I have some really cool ideas on how we can make it super fun and not get bogged down, but still have the, the tension and the danger be high as I like to keep it. Um, we'll be doing a giveaway. Um, we'll give away some dice. Um, I can't guarantee it's going to be this specific set of dice, but it might be a dice that looks like that from Azure Forged um, here in Duluth, uh, Minnesota. It's going to be great. Um, I love those dice. I love giving people stuff as long as they live within the continental United States. Um, we learned that the, one the hard that's way. The, the, that's the yeah. kicker. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, come on by. It's going to be fun. 7 p.m. Central Standard Time to 10 p.m. ish Central Standard Time. Me and uh, my friends will be playing uh fifth edition uh, brought to you actually i should i should bring this up i have to always remember this now brought to you by your official sponsor our official sponsor dream realm storytellers who are in fact the uh writers publishers uh of the Sphelan campaign setting which is the so campaign sweet. center that we're using for that game i still uh, can't believe North... that there are there are sponsors it's crazy i know it blows <laughs> so my cool. mind yeah uh, yeah i like Six months ago, we had a Discord chat with them, and I was, like, trying not to lose my shit while we were doing, like, hey, this is our idea for things that we're doing. And now we have a live stream where that some people watch, and, and there are sponsors. It's great. Um, so, yeah, anyway, long story short, as if you're familiar with me, you know that I ramble on. Uh, it's going to be fun. Um, maybe someone will die. We'll see. I don't know. Whoa, 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 Slow down that, there, buddy. Is that too much? There. You took it too uh, far. You took it too far. All right. All right. <laughs> no spoilers. I'll tell you no what. spoilers. I'll tell you what. Somebody might live. We'll go. Hey, that's, <laughs> that's good. That's positive. I like the positivity in that. You know, you flipped it. It's good. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Chad. Yeah, check us out tomorrow night. You won't be disappointed. Um, you know, I... <laughs> That kind of brings up you, you. You mentioned Chad that we, uh, you know, we're in Duluth, and I think that might be of interest for folks. Just sort of baseline, like a little bit about the guild itself. Yeah. I mean, essentially, you know, what it was. I guess so. I had a home game going about a year before the pandy started, and I had started recording the audio recording the the sessions because i have a terrible memory and and i was like what did we do last session you know you're riffing and you're you know um you're you're just kind of ad-libbing things and and pulling things out of places that you didn't know you had things to pull um yeah like my beard like where did that come from (laughs) what was that that's a plot hook right there you know (laughs) and so i started recording these these episodes and and then i was like well i'll put them on youtube so i can share them with the other players you know kept them sort of in the loop to help facilitate uh you know jogging the old the old memory and then chad and i got together shortly after well it was i guess it was a little while after we started the the uh beyond salt marsh because as as folks who have have gone back to YouTube and checked out our first season of of Salt Marsh, uh, it's the audio's pretty rough. There's no video. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, we didn't we weren't really thinking about anyone watching it besides us. You know, and it was really just an archive. But then Chad and I got together, Chester Creek. If people are familiar with Duluth. We had a convo about you know doing something with this idea of the guild, and. Chad, I know you had been sort of thinking about this stuff, and I had been thinking about this yeah. stuff, and we had been playing in a couple of games together. And... Was this pre pre pandemic shutdown? No, this, this was... was yeah. When was that? Or was this after? Uh, was it? I think it was after we started what this yeah started as right because we, started... we had been because we had been playing together already by then, mm-hmm. but it was like. That was like maybe like it was still cold out. It was, October, it was still, you know there was still November. snow on the there was still snow on the ground. So I think that was like <clears throat> fucking like June, 
not no it would have been like april or may of I'm 2020 pretty sure. yeah of 2020 that the, yeah that we had that we had that little impromptu meeting because we had well, masks and, on and, and we were sitting uh, okay far so apart. it was after okay yep. Drinking well, coffee. We, I was drinking coffee. Yeah. We didn't even start streaming on Twitch because we, you know, we had no idea what Twitch was even. But we didn't start. We yeah. didn't start doing the Twitch. And do we really know what it is now? I don't know. It's whatever. <laughs> We're now. still figuring it out. Yeah. We're figuring it out. But <laughs> I watch people who've been doing this for a long time, and we have no idea. What yeah. Doing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I'm not even showing any cleavage. I mean, come on. What the heck? <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so we had that conversation and then we didn't, we started streaming, I think the salt marsh game right around the time where roll your doom started. And that was November, I think of 2020. Yeah. So it took us a while to get to where we are yeah. now. And we still yeah. have a long way to when, go, of course. When did we start video on? That was November. YouTube. Oh, oh, when we just decided for YouTube? to do Twitch. Yeah, I think oh, it was. The, so video, I thought we did video. We were doing video. I thought we were doing video for like before streaming. Like a little th- bit, like maybe yeah, like maybe. two episodes. Yeah, yeah, it might have overlapped a little, but yeah. I think it was all in preparation to go. Yeah, we. I think we were testing it out. Eventually, we were testing out the system, and then I I needed to like build a computer because my laptop yeah. would would burn. It would start to smoke. <laughs> yeah. From, uh, anyway, yeah. so that's that's where that's <laughs> kind of how we got here. But we are, you know, uh, Chad and I are in Duluth, Minnesota. Um, I was born and raised here. Chad, where were you born again? Uh, Minneapolis, the yeah, Twin Minneapolis. Cities. And Andy was born oh. in Duluth. Andy and I went to uh, uh, technically fr- the cities, but yeah, I grew up my whole life in Duluth. Yeah, we went to preschool together. So yeah. Andy and I wow. go way back. Way I have, back. I have yeah. some crazy preschool pictures with Andy and myself. And yeah. do you really? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's nuts. For sure. Yeah, we went to that. Um, you know, I don't know if it's still is it still a preschool up I there by be, UMD? Yeah. Right by yeah. UMD. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, good times. What's up, Jokey? Awesome. You know what we're talking about. Hey, we're talking about is. Duluth. Um, <laughs> yeah, Jonah's one of our buddies from Duluth, too. And he's got the sweet emotes. Um, God, that is a cool emote. I know. We need to get some reggae emotes. But in the meantime, we'll do this. Oh, sweet. We got a, we we got got a little bot. Too. We got a little spammer in here. How do what I, the hell? How do I, Come on, how do I man. get you out of here? I don't how know. Do I, do I think you have to go to the... Kirk is not here. I don't know how to do it. Yeah, where's where is Kirk? We don't have our Twitch guy. Here, I'll get rid of him. Uh, Boop, delete. There we go. There you go. Oh, wait, Jonah, you... you went to university as well. That's cool. I like it. Um, I went to the uh, the actual Twitch stream, and then if you look, the, uh, there's a little like trash can next to the each message. Anyways. Yeah, you get that if you're a moderator. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm in mod view. Yeah, you should have it. Anyhow, yeah. anyway, anyway, yeah. so that's, that's nobody kind of wants to watch at. that. Andy is out on the East coast now. So we're lucky enough to be able to do this, you know, over the internet and bring him in from afar. Uh, Michael is in Pennsylvania, I believe. Right. Yep. He, yeah, yeah. Just outside of Pittsburgh. Yep. And Kirk who plays Byron, he is also in Duluth. So, yep. um, you know, uh, the Superior Adventures Guild, definitely named after Lake Superior, which is near and dear to all of our hearts. And that's sort of, that was the inspiration for it. That's, that's where, why we started this thing. And now we're. And I met, we're... and I met Michael here. Michael actually lived in Duluth. He's mm. from the, he's from the, uh, I'll call it Southeast coast, North, yeah. like North Carolina, okay. but he had been here for, in Duluth for six or seven years, maybe. Um, and then recently moved out to Pittsburgh. So hey, we man. all, we all from around. Hey, what's up, yeah, Vamp? All, Vamp Whitman's kind of in the house. Duluth connection there. Yeah, there's a Duluth connection for all of us. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so that's that's kind of that's where we came from. That's how we got here, and um, it's been super fun learning all this stuff with you guys and uh, figuring out how to stream and and then people have you know having people like Jokey and and Vamp and. Um, you know, uh, folks show up regulars that are coming in to our streams, which is super fun to see. That's, so that's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's, that's it's definitely awesome. a different kind of vibe, but <laughs> let's, uh, so what we wanted to do tonight was, um, was talk a little bit about the very first season and, um, you know, look back to season one, where this thing started, uh, talk a little bit about, I have some questions, some notes to, to riff off of talking about plot, talking about character and talking about setting, you know, fluid conversation. If there are folks in the chat who have questions, you know, 
type them out in there. Let us know. We'll we'll get to them. Um, we certainly can address the questions that you guys have as well. Um, and uh, yeah, <laughs> so um, I guess talking a little bit big picture, right? Of of Beyond Salt Marsh. I think the first season is actually called the Jewel from Below. If you if you it look is. at our at our YouTube page, um, and that's you know that title is still um, relevant, obviously. And we'll talk a little bit about, about that too. But, um, for the two of you guys, um, and I know Chad, you, you and I have played together previously before this campaign, Andy, I mean, you haven't played Dungeons and Dragons or an RPG before this for 20 years or more, maybe yeah, probably yeah, yep. my, wow. most of my adult life. Yeah. Um, what, uh, what was it that excited you guys to want to be part of you know this sort of salt marsh campaign like this game what what was it that that got you fired up to jump in and do this with me you want you want to start andy well I, I i remember when you first asked me and it was like right after everything shut down i wasn't up to very much you know there wasn't much to do i was out in long island at the time and uh i was like D, do i really want to like I haven't played that since I was like 12, you know, like, and even then, and even then my older brother, Jake would be like all annoyed with me and he wouldn't ever want to play with me. And it was like mostly him and his friends that were playing most of the time. Were they playing D and D or were they playing riffs? I remember a lot of well, riffs. They books. started, they started with D and D okay. and then later on they, they shifted and they started playing like rifts and then I'm pretty sure they played some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Um, nice. the role-playing rep, game rep uh, that. so like that was my experience like i was like god you know and so i had all these misconceptions and i was like you know can i really like role play like that was such a a loaded word for me <laughs> as like an adult trying to like you know think of how to play but then after that first session i was like oh i like this that's the, <laughs> uh, that's the really that's the key that's yeah. the key right there I, i'm it's an adult like, how there was, do I play? Yeah. Yeah. It was like that. It was like, cause it's a pretty loaded word. Like when it's not, you know, not in, not in the context of, you know, a game, you know, like how can I pretend to be someone like, you know, but then when you're in the game and you're pre presented with like the mechanics of it, you know, I just, I had a lot of fun that first session and I was like, Oh, I actually really like doing this. Oh yeah. So I was, I was hooked pretty quick. Nice. But what was the, so like the moment I, I asked you if you wanted to do it and you were, you were a little questioning, you were hesitant. Yeah. Cause you had asked me before, like, like months before, I yeah. feel like you, you had brought it up to me like a couple of times in the I past. Lobbied. I was like, oh. I was like, Dave's asking you're, me you're in, you know, you, and I, I just said yes his, before I knew. You're in the Crystal Straw about. game, right? Yes, Andy? I was, but I was a late but, joiner. But you weren't well. in it. You weren't in it before. Yeah. No. Right. No. Okay. Um. So, yeah, yeah it was no. more like I had to kind of be talked, kind of coaxed into it, I guess. And then, but then I found I loved it. So, you know, I knew you would. Been, I knew uh, you would just yeah. join you. I knew you'd you'd enjoy it. I knew you'd be good at it too. Um, which I've been impressed, you know, with Thanks. with your gameplay certainly, especially not having done it a whole lot. So, what about you, oh, Chad? Yeah. You know, like we were playing, and I know, like you had I mean, other games the, going on, and you're busy. Here's and... the deal. Here's the deal. You say to me, "Hey, we're gonna play this game." I'm gonna be like, "Do I got some time?" Yes, I'm in. I don't care. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, and it was the shutdown. Before the shutdown, I was working in the uh, brewery industry, uh, so the shutdown pretty much killed killed my work at the time. Um, so I didn't. I hadn't been able to find any like at home work so i was just kind of living off that government money uh with a bunch of time on my hands so you were like hey we're gonna do this one shot and i was like yeah let's do it i'm only playing D, &D right now like four days a week what's another day it's no big deal <laughs> oh, <geez>. <laughs> <laughs> wow. that was one game that that was a that was a monthly game that during the shutdown was like eh let's play every day wow <laughs> it was it was fun i mean nobody was doing anything so it was but it was okay my wife doesn't hate me for it so <laughs> i mean that's a plus well she yeah. plays uh she does yeah and she plays and she's played with me for a little uh of i guess a couple years now i've had her playing with me but 
Four years. Four years she's been playing. She just yelled <laughs> she's at me. She's tweeting down in the hall. Ear. <laughs> and she, she played on the, the Halloween one shot, right? She was yep. on our Halloween yes. one shot. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Happy Jack's. But yeah, you were, you Happy were like, Jack's. hey, I want to do this. I want to do this one shot. Um, and it was, it was with some people that I know and enjoy and w- w- have wanted to role play with. I'm going to be honest. I've wanted to role play with Kendra since I met her because I knew, like, I, we can smell her own. I was like, I know, I know there's this thing about you that you're not telling us because we're in a a different scenario right now. But, uh, and it was, yeah. And you were like, Hey, it's salt, it's salt marsh. It's, it's the, it's that salt marsh book. I'm like, awesome. I'm in, I wanted to do it. So I don't I take much, if there's, much if there's pirates, in. if there's pirates involved, I kind of figured you'd be in pirates. Yeah. 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 Pirates and good yeah. people. And that's great. Yeah. So, I mean, for me, it was definitely a one shot. It was like, all right, the pandemic, I'm not doing anything. I'm not going to be going anywhere. You know, I, I'd been running Curse of Strahd for about a year at the time. And I was like, I, I need just a little, I need a little diversity. You know, I need, I need something a little bit different because, you know, Curse of Strahd's pretty heavy, you know, and, and our, our Beyond Saltmarsh game is definitely a serious game, but there's, I think there's many more sort of like, there's more levity in the gameplay. Mm-hmm. I think the setting of, of Barovia is just, it yeah, just the setting isn't getting like the things that happen to our characters at times are, are kind of downers Yeah, <laughs> and the, the fallout of the bullshit that we do sometimes is like, yeah, yeah. Uh, but shit. like. But Greyhawk isn't trying to smash us into place. <laughs> no, you can occasionally just go to a tavern and chill. Get in a yeah. bar fight. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, and then exactly. find something to get into. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So that's that, that's what it was for me. And it was definitely going to be a one shot. I certainly didn't think that we would continue on past. You know, I think we, we counted it out before streaming tonight. And it was seven, um, seven episodes from the first season. And we had, so it was Chad uh andy and then it was kendra who chad mentioned Mm -hmm. and her partner adam Mm -hmm. and um and again it was like cool people that i'd wanted to play with kendra is a a member of a long-running game called twins twin portals Mm -hmm. and they they actually have a podcast that everybody should check out it's it's fun to listen to they're really a fun group um, they all have, I think all of them have acting backgrounds and they're just, they're really fun to listen to. And, and they, they'll do live shows occasionally in Duluth and, uh, before the pandy, of course, um, I've been to a couple of them, super fun, but Kendra I've known for a long time and I've been trying to get her into a game for a long time. So I was happy when she said yes. Um, nice. yeah. and, and she and Adam were able to stick, stick around for the first season. After the first season, they, they had other things that they needed to take care of and the timing didn't work out as well, but that was when we recruited Kirk and Michael came in probably four episodes into season two. Um, yeah, right, after remember, right after we died. Right after yeah. the TPK on the, on the dunes, <laughs> on the, the skull dunes of Abbey oh, Isle. If anybody's ever yeah. been there, it's beautiful this time of year. Um, oh, but yeah, goodness. that that was kind of how it started. And um, man, I'm glad we did that. I'm glad that that, that one shot happened um yeah. initial conceptions like I, I i bet similar to me you didn't you know you didn't think it was going to go beyond a one shot probably but um well i, I really had it... no idea what was going on i didn't i wouldn't <laughs> to be honest i didn't know it was a one shot i was like we're just playing yeah. D now like yeah. that was, right, right you know it went several you know sessions and i was having a good time and and i think you asked me if you if i wanted to keep playing and i was like yeah let's Let's do it. I guess that's when season two started. So mm-hmm. yeah, but, I think for me, like w- once we got maybe like an hour in to the first session, I was like, "Yeah, this is not just a shot. <laughs> We're gonna keep playing. This is how it's gonna happen." <laughs> I've been playing D and D long enough to know that that's how it works. <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You just get hooked. You get drawn in. Yeah. I think that the for me, it's always been like having the right group of people at the table and having the right table culture. Because I've definitely been in a lot of groups that haven't, they haven't panned out. You know, you do a, a couple yeah. sessions and it just kind of fizzles or mm-hmm. you don't feel that whatever that thing is that, that I feel every time I get together with you guys to play. You know, there's like that, 
even before we were streaming, there was like that buzz. There was like that. Um, right. There the was meme a meme wall is happening on our Discord chat. Oh, I love, I love that. That's my favorite yeah. thing. The day, the day of the game, you get on Discord in the morning. And it's just like Bing, 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 Bing. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, even before we were streaming, you know, just the mo- it motivates. Whereas there's other, there's been other groups that I've been in where it just there wasn't the motivation to like really dig into character and really. Right. Like, so I don't know what your experiences have been, Chad, with groups, but certainly I think that we've got something special here. Yeah, for me, I guess most like in my career playing games for a lot, I've been playing D&D a long time, uh, pretty consistently. I think the only, I stopped playing D&D regularly when I was in the army for like two years. But that said, we still played, like, we played probably three sessions of D&D um, when I was in the Army, and we played a bunch of other games and stuff, like board games and Magic the Gathering and stuff. But most, like, most of the games I've played through the years have have been with, like, really good groups of friends. Like, it's, whether or not it's the, the like, the, usually it's, the, you know, the DM who kind of gets it together. It's always been made some really good choices. Like I've had a a blessing to have played with the many of the groups I've played with that have been great. Our DMs, my DMs have all generally been great um, and super fun. So I haven't like I've had a couple of like I don't know, not bad, but like meh yeah. experiences. But it's not. Yeah. But yeah. Not too much. It's mostly been pretty good, but for sure, like this is. I would. I would agree with you. This is the, like this group, and I mean, and especially what we're doing. I feel like is is here is is you know a, a little different level, um, and and maybe some of that is the fact that now we're like you and I. Like even before you and you know we were streaming, you and I. You know from that from that kind of meeting had been kind of taking this a little more seriously like our intent had been to to do something with our hobby now and then now we're here we are we have two freaking shows on twitch that you know get some views and and it's and it's great and we've made a lot of connections so this is i'm really happy and really excited that this group is how it is and is you know invested and we it's really all i look forward to in my week (laughs) I mean, not just this game, but you know, playing yeah. playing with this group and, and you know, and with tomorrow's group and and yeah. doing stuff with with this group as a whole, with the guild, as it were, right? Right, right. So yeah, this is it's been great. It definitely. I think I posted on Twitter like uh, this game has saved my life, and you know that might be a little bit of hyperbole, um, but certainly like throughout the last year, um, my my desire to be in the imagination realm to be Mm -hmm. creating something that's not directly tied to all of the bullshit that's going on, uh, in the real world has been super helpful. Uh, you know, like therapeutic. Yeah. Yeah. 2020 and the year 2020. Yeah. Yeah. And and some of the craziness that bled into 2021, even, I mean, Uh, yeah, it's still, you know, just being able to, (laughs) yeah, it's a lot better though. It's uh, better. But anyways, but, not yeah. to get too political, but right. Yeah. Um, Trump. Anyways. Um, so here we are in 2021 and, and I just, yeah, I mean, I, it was, it was a blessing to have something that motivated me to create, to think out, to think outside the real world, to create our own world that, you know, yeah, yeah. has a lot of, a lot of problems obviously. And there's a lot of, craziness but it's there's it's just fun to co-create with people Mm -hmm. right the connection like still having a connection with people even despite a pandemic was and it's a really interesting connection it's not i don't know it's it's how what do you guys think about like the connection that you have with people that you're co-creating a world with i think it's (laughs) go ahead no i was just gonna say it's it's pretty unique it's um yeah. It's not like just hopping on a Zoom call and having a conversation with somebody, you know what I mean? It's like mm-hmm. it's a lot different and then even after our games we usually hang out and chat and 
you know, so it's, yeah, it's pretty fun and unique, unique experience, I think, to yeah. meet new people this way. Yeah, a lot of, man, a lot of people kind of poo-poo what we're doing. Uh, you know, some of the circles I run, some of the game circles I run in, uh, you know, people are like, oh, like streaming a game, you know, and there was a lot of kickback, you know, I remember from the beginning of the pandemic of people being like, what? I can't play in person now. I got to use freaking Roll20. Like we're just doing like <laughs> Zoom chats. And I mean, and, you know, and you, man, I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm a fairly privileged white guy, you know, but it's like, so what? <laughs> like, we're yeah. still playing a game. I'm still talking to my friends, you know. It's not like, you know, and maybe part of it's like, I have a, you know, I have a fairly serious, I didn't necessarily, de I didn't deploy, but, I, you know, I have a, I have a very particular experience where it's like, I didn't necessarily get to do some of these things for a long time, and, you know, and it's like, you know, nobody's, nobody's fucking shooting at us right now. Like, we're not, <laughs> like, we're not, like, this isn't insane. This, I mean, it sucks, but it's not crazy in that right. kind of way. I mean, it is a little crazy, but, but yeah, we're still playing and, and I, it's, it's, it's not the same as playing in real life, but I think the difference, I, at least at the level, I think that we have as a group and, you know, some of the other, like, uh, the, some of the other community of like Twitch streamers uh, and D&D &D players that, uh, that we've kind of met and I see their play, like, there's a lot of us who are doing the same thing and it's mm -hmm. just as good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think for, I know for me, like I can't high five you when we roll a natural <laughs> 20, but yeah. um, it's like, it's just, and, I, and the other, I guess the other thing too, is that it does take time. It was awkward at first. And I think for us at first it, you know, we weren't necessarily video because we, we, we weren't, we weren't necessarily prepared for that. And I know like, you, you know, we weren't like, not everybody had a good camera. Not everybody was on a wired connection. Some of us were still wireless. And so it's, it's going to be weird. Um, and then, but we've gotten used to it. And, you know, and so there were times at the beginning where, you know, you get distracted and you're playing fucking Facebook or whatever, when you're supposed to be playing, paying attention to the D and D, but, but now it's like, you know, we, we've got audio video is good. Like we're, we're locked in, we're playing and everything is, is great. I, you know, for me, I think it's, it's, it's great. Like, yeah, I agree. I, I think <laughs> that was as long. A, yeah, that's all right. That's all right. That's good. Uh, I, you know, as a D as the DM, uh, of this particular campaign, I, I kind of like the the virtual interface because i i really i'm visual so i like i like the maps i like being able to put mm -hmm. images on a screen um i don't have a ton of expendable resources to build and buy terrain and minis and time to paint yeah. I, mean, I have done that stuff but it's not something that i have a lot of time for or really an interest in getting too deep into um, i have done it f when i've needed minis for home games and stuff but I like being able to, you know, incarnate is a great tool uh, that yeah. that we use a lot to make maps. Amazing, uh, you know, using uh, Twitch and OBS and whatever, all these these bells and whistles has has been great. I think the immersion can be almost better. Um, we can I can fine tune the the audio and the sound effects. You know, if I want right. to, I can do one of these. Have fucking chicken. You know what I mean? The the forest chicken comes into play. Yeah. You know? It's um, it's literally all I know. <laughs> of D D. It's like I remember rolling dice and making character sheets right, for, right. you know yeah. um, back in the day, but I don't even own a set of dice. Oh yeah. You know? And I've been playing D D for a year. I thought we were gonna get you some, we, Chad, we need to put together a care package for Andy maybe, so he's got yeah. some dice. Maybe we can make a rule that I can enter the chat giveaway. Uh -huh. I can send you some dice, man. I'll get you some. I'll, I'll, I could I'll, easily buy my own. I'm just like I'll get you. I'll get you a cool set of dice. I They're not a sponsor, really... but I will plug AzureForged.com. Yeah. That's where Chad got these cool dice sets that we've been giving away. So just go check them out. Is that I'm really their website? Them. Probably. <laughs> uh, yeah. It might not be. That's yeah. okay. Don't worry about it. Yeah. 
but no, I've, I, I, I agree with you. It's, it's definitely different than playing in person, but I, I have grown to really appreciate it. And you know, the fact that we can connect with Michael and Andy who we would never be yeah. able to play with, um, right. unless we had this yeah. way to do it. So that's pretty yeah. sweet. Yeah. 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 I'm glad I can still play with Michael. Mm-hmm. Because like we played a few, like I, he was my, he was, he was like my friend when he was living up here and we played a few games together and did a bunch of other stuff together. So it's, it's nice to, after he moved away, it's nice to still be able to connect and, and, and play. Yep. That's pretty sweet. Sure. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's, let's turn our focus back to, uh, the first, the first season a little bit now. Um, what I was hoping that we could talk a little bit about uh, character. Um, and I think Chad, we'll start with you. Um, now I, I know that even before, well, I know, but other folks should know too, that right now you're playing Tenok Knucklebones, right? Um, the halfling divination wizard. Prior to that, you were playing Eren Colbiter, who was Colbiter. A, yeah, the best, Colbiter. the best, um, who was a, a dwarven uh, monk. And, but there was a, you had a, your first original Saltmarsh character. I did have a first character. It was Corkeros. Now, can you tell us a little bit about Corkeros and what was the, what was the character concept that you were? Oh, man. Yeah. Corkeros. Corkeros is a journey. Corkeros is a journey I want to get back to someday. Uh, He's still out there. Yeah. So, um, so first off, so Corkeros is, um, a uh Enku. um so the you know the crow raven folk kind of dudes who don't speak normally for yeah. some dumb reason i don't get it um but it, it makes for cool things um and he was a pirate like i picked the pirate background he was a, a rogue swashbuckler um and kind of like the impetus for him partially was i had um there's a oh, what is it called Algaz, algazar's like world generator which is like on uh a, it's a search it out algaz algazar's world generator so you can like randomly generate a world like and it'll be like con uh continents it'll be like countries it'll be religions all this stuff and I had spent a lot of time, a lot of time on it. And uh, I had, like, in using this random world generator, I come up with this, like, um, culture of sea, sea-dwelling, like, Kenku, because that's, that's kind of what it gave me. Um, and I was like, oh, this could be cool. So I, I was like, oh, we're playing Salt Marsh. I want to be a pirate kind of guy. Um, but so ultimately that's kind of where he, that's the kind of the brain child that he was in. Um, but he was like a good guy pirate. He was like a, you know, like Jack Sparrow, right? Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, realistically, if you look at the, the breadth of, of his arc, he's a, a fairly competent, incompetent in per- person, right? He sucks, but he's really good at sucking or doing the things that he does. Um, And he's kind of a dick about it. Um, And I kind of, my idea was that Corcoros was a little bit, like in retrospect, my idea is that Corcoros was a little bit like Jack Sparrow, although he wasn't really a necessary, we didn't have him long enough maybe for him to become a dick about it in in certain ways, right? Um, But he was all about like the freedom of the sea and... um, like, and ultimately, like, I had, I don't remember if it was before or during or before creation or, or, like, when I was formatting his idea or during creation or afterwards, but I had decided that he uh, he worshipped the sea, like, the sea was his god, um, and ultimately, like, in, 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 you know, Greyhawk or whatever, or in, in D&D, like, is that... Like, does he worship the sea god, or is he worship the idea of the sea? And it ultimately, it, it doesn't necessarily matter right now. I'm not playing Corcoros, uh, but he was all about the sea and and kind of the freedom that it represented. And he was a pirate, and now he's kind of a good guy pirate. Um, 
but he was super fun. I had like a bunch of different ideas for voices that I would use at certain times. <laughs> Because it's a Kenku, right? That's how they talk. Yeah, they're, they're, so for that those is, of you that don't yeah, know, the Ken, hard, Kenku yeah. is like a mimic. So in ah. in the way that they're sort of conceptualized is like their whole vernacular is things they've heard other people say or other or, or like reproducing sounds they've heard. Um, and, you know, sounds kind of like this. Perhaps, yeah. you know, they would do. Um, it is. It is work. <laughs> Yeah, you you definitely had to work. It is work to play that, uh, which is ultimately what led me to not want to play him. I was just going to ask if that's that was, and I, I kind of yeah. knew that answer. That that's like I want to like I want to play him, and it was you know it was in the middle of the pandemic. Things were weird, and I it was more work than I was prepared to mentally do at the time. It was super fun. Like he was great. Um, he did was, really well I in had, combat for sure. I mean, low I even at a low level. Yeah, I had what, played what, a role we were, before. Were third we, level when we, were, we, started. we started at third. Yeah, I started yeah. at third. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The combat was super fun. I hadn't played a rogue before, so kind of figuring out all of those ideas was fantastic. Was great, uh, but just the role playing stuff was like I wanted to be able to do it, and I wanted to be able to do it well, and I just wasn't able to be there for it. So we put him on hold, and he's not dead, which is great. Um, but oh no, yeah, I, super... I've been thinking about where he is. Yeah, <laughs> nice. I've I have some really cool ideas for things that things that either maybe he's done in the meantime or or like what I would want him to do, like to be in the progress of a character. Like oh, like like when I made Tenok after Eren after the thing with Eren happened. Like I was when I was making Tenok, I was like I could bring in Corcoros, but of course we already had a rogue, rogue swashbuckler in the party. Uh, right. Having two of them, while it isn't in this party, isn't like a problem. Like, I I really didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to play the same fiddle that Kirk is playing. Yeah. Um, but I had some, and I had some I different think you made ideas. The right, but, I think you made the right decision. But, uh, we won't get too far into Tanakh yeah, in this but, conversation, but I think you made the right decision but, based on uh, what I've seen. And then I found like a really cool piece of art that was like this, uh, this Kenku like pirate dude like with the tricorn hat. I don't yeah. remember who did it, and it was just sick. And I was like, yeah, this is what I want to do. <laughs> so he was super fun. I was definitely very swashbuckly. Like I wanted to go over the top swashbuckly, like movement, like sliding down ropes like i never got to put a knife in the sails and and, and do the and do the stupid fall <laughs> that isn't realistic in any way uh but uh you'd ruin a sail i, I would would, allow but, i would allow it but you know yeah <laughs> but because i love awesome. those movies those types of movies as a kid so and even today realistically who am i kidding i love a good yeah, pirate probably. movie yeah oh yeah but um, all right. Well, I'm going to ask, yeah, yeah. I have some more questions for you about Corcoros, but I want to, let's, let's turn to Andy. You know, Runar has been a recurring character throughout the whole game now. Um, the only, the only individual from the original. And there since uh, the start. Yeah. yeah. Since the start. When you think back to the first season, uh, you know, similar question, what, what was your concept for Runar? Um, you know, did you ever fathom that he would become the captain of a ship and all? I mean, he's, no. he, you know, he's, it didn't happen until season two. So, you know, but he has become, you know, he became the hero of salt marsh for crying out loud. Like, yeah. um, you know, and he, and he's now the captain of the good buddy in this, in this crew and everything. What was the original idea behind Runar? Well, <laughs> well, when I first started, I was like, I was a little intimidated by like the mechanics sure. of, you know, as a new player. Um, so I was like, I need something simple that I can like get into the game with. So naturally that's how I kind of went to the champion fighter. Um, uh, but like worldwide, I wanted, you know, I picked the Marine background. I wanted him to be kind of uh, a soldier, but with his background, his like his backstory i guess um he's also just been around the sea his entire life um 
had run-ins with the law, um, was drafted into service. Um, so I, you know, he does have a bit of a backstory there too, as well. Yeah. For you, um, uh, for you Greyhawk nerds out there like us, you know, uh, Runar served with the Keeland Navy and there's some backstory elements there that have come out in subsequent seasons, but, um, right. yeah. So, um, but yeah, it's been, it's been interesting seeing where he started out. He was, uh, hired on to the soul of winter as a security officer you know, based on his military background mm -hmm. and, you know, he, he survived that battle, um, where they were attacked by the black trident and all his other teammates like left town. So all of a sudden he was the sole survivor of that battle, <laughs> even though other people survived, it was just like, he got this reputation around town. And I feel like that's kind of right just kind of followed him along through absolutely the play. it sure did plus he, <laughs> plus he earned a he good some, amount of money from that so some ching -ching. good ching -ching. amount of money he had uh, um some sway i guess yeah for sure you know that that maybe this is a good time to talk a little 3, bit 3300 gold to be perhaps correct yes that would be a accurate well i got each i got well, i got Rallying is no slouch you know, no. if, it, if anybody no is, slouch. Yeah, it was. <laughs> if anybody's familiar with this particular, you know, book, you may have looked at chapter four salvage operation. That is where we started. The campaign was with that particular, um, adventure. And, you know, as, as a DM does, I definitely took some, some liberties with, with the narrative and, and modified it a little bit, but for folks who didn't follow or haven't gone back and listened to it what between between the three of us let's let's give them a little bit of a description of what happened um you know think about uh sort of the the arc of those those seven episodes what are some of the highlights that you remember the the party you know the party was hired by Drally and we started out the very f episode one essentially I, I give some exposition again thinking that this was going to be a one shot get them basically leaving Dralian's estate with a mission. Go and meet Windrune, get on the Soul of Winter, and go find this Emperor of Waves ship that's been spotted adrift. Recover the box, and then come back. Fetch quest at yeah, its finest. It super yeah. simple. Four episodes later, we finally finished the fetch quest. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, let's let's talk a little bit about the about the what happened across those episodes we've fought a lot of freaking spiders that's true they they did fill that emperor of waves oh, with a lot of spiders a lot of spiders where did oh, all the spiders yeah. come from like can we objectively think about the world building of of that <laughs> no i came i came on a couple oh sorry i don't mean to no you're okay but um i came on a couple sessions after you guys started were there any encounters before any encounters before you guys the soul of winter before found, you found the um oh emperor before we waves. got to the emperor of the waves yeah no it no, was okay. yeah it was it was it was meet wind rune get on the emperor or get on the on the soul of winter and then we we got to the there was like there might have been like a role that dave did but there was just like exposition water travel get to the get was to there the, was yep. there a failed attempt to yes get on that's the boat? that's where that it was. so before before <laughs> yeah. runar okay. joined there was a a boarding party and i i want to say that the warlock was killed in that the first... warlock and i think two guys were killed yep. two npcs might have been killed as well uh, and okay. like my uh, Corcoros and Whimsy, Kendra, who was Ken, Kendra's cleric, were the only people that made it off that the first encounter. It was, and I had to be dragged off if I remember right. Yeah, it was, it was ridiculous. Brutal. I don't know. Face if... Two two clusters of spider swarms, a face spider, an edder cap. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm God. looking. I'm looking at was, the encounters. It was a bit much. And... And I don't remember if I went exactly with with you know the layout here, but yeah, giant spider, yeah. edder cap, swarm of spiders, giant spider, edder cap, swarm of spiders, 
Giant oh, wolf spiders. Swarm of spiders. Oh, that, that wolf spider was nasty. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then there was a was... phase spider. Yeah. yeah and at, at third level, you're like... Back to back brutal. to back to back. It was yeah. brutal. No, Holy let's see. shit. They say that this is designed for six fourth level characters. That's probably why. <laughs> yep, six that's the problem. Level. Yep, yeah. that'll do it. Six. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. you know, what do they know? What do they know about, ba- <laughs> about a one shot? What, they, yeah. what do they know about balancing you know? RPGs? Yeah. yeah, so, I mean, you know, I did kill the warlock pretty much in the first encounter. Part and of that was his fault, though. Yeah, I mean, well, that for being a warlock, first of all, they're super squishy at thir- you know right. early levels. But no, um, I don't remember what the scenario was, how he died. Do you, Chad? How he died? Yeah. I mean, it was spiders. I think... Uh, <laughs> yeah, good So, good And some of these, like, we were on that ship for enough, long enough that it's hard to remember <laughs> specifically, but, like, I remember... So the first time we went down and we found that first room that had the Shrine of Loth in it and we encountered those spiders and we got, we managed to get out of that first room and I think that's all the further we got that session, like that bit. Like he died, I think in that second room fighting the face spider where we were trying to get out, get back upstairs because we were just getting murdered. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Because then I remember his second character, we were in like this weird hallway battle in a very similar part of the ship. Also a warlock. Um, yeah, also, also a warlock. A warlock. Um, and we love you. Adam. We kind of got we got like pinned. We got like pinned up in that hallway and just kind of brutalized because we were kind of split up and we couldn't. We didn't have a lot of room to maneuver, and it was. It was you rough, know, but that, there's something yeah. to be said about fighting on ships. There's a lot of of narrow corridors. There's not a lot yeah. of space to spread out. Yeah. Um. You know the the the. I don't know if he was a warlock or a priest. Uh, the Krell, who was the um, the bad druid. guy. He was a dr- half orc druid. Oh man, when that dude showed up and cast whatever freaking fire spell that was, we it lost was our shit. Flaming sphere. <laughs> Yeah, we lost our shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was bad. We were like, ah, fuck. So Andy, by the time Runar was deployed, it was the second attempt. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. We Um, all had like super serious PTSD. Yeah, I remember you guys warning me about all the spiders. (laughs) I was like, spiders. Those don't sound too bad. Well, and then we got down. We finally got down to the hold, and there were ghouls down there. Yeah, ghasts. Or gas. I know. Worse. I know. I know. I'm like, what is space spiders? Gas? What are their gas doing down here? Am I am I am I a mean DM? Because uh, I, I just want to say this. I Adam's second warlock was killed as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. He never made oh, it off man. the ship. I was oh, like, I remember Adam. I was like, oh wait, you died last time too. Yeah. Oh. I remember that. Wow. Ouch. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we um, battle through the spiders, through the ghasts, and we find Dralian's blue box in the hold, mm-hmm. right? And at that point, everybody was like, let's get out of here, right? Mm-hmm. So um, the minute we touch it, all hell breaks loose, basically. Yep. Um, this is my this is my favorite part of the whole uh, encounter, to be honest with you. We pick up the box. We make ready to go back the way we came into the ship. And it's heavier than hell. It takes two people yeah, to carry it. Yeah, took two it. of us. Yeah. Um, so we start back because we know we cleared a path through that route. So we were like, let's not go any other way. Um, and the ship is invaded by giant black tentacles shooting into it from all sides. Yeah, so <laughs> rad. Yeah, that was so cool. So it was, I mean, I, I can't remember. Were we having to make like saves? Yeah, to get yeah. So we them? had to make we had to make strength at like athletics rolls to move the freaking box. Yep. And then All every right. round we had to make deck saves 
to not get knocked prone as the ship is just getting tossed around by this giant octopus or squid or whatever. It but was. it was it was written really well that part of the adventure in in the Salt Marsh book because it was essentially a set of time. It was a timer. Yeah. Here, this what happens round one. This happens round two, and then you know if you get to a certain point, it's like the ship breaks apart, and now you're swimming, and you lose the you basically lose the box at that point. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was to me that was the the. And that's why I ch actually why I chose that adventure to to run. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, opinions about the Salt Marsh book, and all of them are valid because that that's people's opinions and the and what they think of the of the adventures that are inside of it. I think some of them are better than others, but I think in my mind, Salvage Operation was the was the was the most tightly packaged, well written, interesting mechanic to you know built into it that didn't require a ton of like um i didn't have to homebrew a ton for it you know what i mean mm -hmm. like it was right. pretty well written um and for a one shot that was nice because i didn't want to have to you know go off the deep end like i did late in season two um yeah yeah <laughs> kate 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 welsh and and her team did a fucking phenomenal job on that book love it or hate it she, they did a really good I job. I like on that it. Book. I think it's great. Yeah. And I and even though we're, you know, beyond Salt Marsh now, of course that's the title of our of our game, but I still utilize a lot of the content in this book for inspiration or flat mm -hmm. out pull from it for encounters. Um there's a lot of great stuff in here that I still use. And we we worked through, I mean, not to get too far outside of season 1, but we worked through, you know, the majority of the, you know, 5 out of 7. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah, I would say five out of seven adventures we utilized in our game. We didn't finish them all, but oh, that's fantastic! Yeah, so yeah, I suppose we did the we did part of the Isle Isle Abbey, Abbey Isle, Isle thing. Yeah. Yep, yep. That's where we did well, the Sahu. Yeah. Do we do, is it the Sahuagin <clears throat> Fortress or yeah. Sahaugen or the Sawajin Lair? Sawajin, Sawajin, yeah. yeah. We, you know, the um, the sinister secret of Salt Marsh. We did that. So, but that's all season two. Yeah. Yep. Different characters, other yeah. than yep. Runar. Yep. So, uh, actually, isn't that when the second warlock died? Is is on that break? I think he died out. out yeah. To the ship. We were trying to get back onto the top of the ship, and I think he ended up getting smacked around by the tentacles or something. Ooh, yeah. He. We. We were like one person was off the ship. We had like like i think one of the npcs was still on the ship like we were moving the the box off and he was like because there was also like i th I feel like there were also like fucking spiders around there was as, another encounter on top of the there yeah, were while the tentacles are happening and, or and he got and he got killed up on deck with the other two <laughs> with the other and then two i NPCs. think i think somebody else had gone down because i remember us trying to do Medicine checks on maybe it was I. NPC. I had gone down. Cork you guys, okay. you guys, like we're carrying it. I think it was like you and I carrying this box, yeah. carrying it. I went down. You threw me into the lifeboat. Yeah. <laughs> over the side of the ship, I distinctly remember that for sure. Yeah, and then wow. we, you were doing death saves, and we like yeah. stabilized you. Yeah. Eventually, <laughs> it it took a couple of us trying. So yeah, we got Dralian's box eventually onto the boat. Um, and then what happened after that? So that's the end of essentially that's the end of the salvage operation as written. So the last, mm -hmm. I don't know, two episodes maybe or episode and a half maybe. I don't remember exactly. I know it was at least one episode. That was all sort of on the fly, random encounter. I think is what it was. You know, on the way oh, back okay. to the Volchek. Yep, on the way back yeah. to Salt Marsh with the you know the crew, you had the you, you had lost some people, you had the box, and then there was a pirate ship encounter, and it was and like was full scale boarding epic. party. Yeah, that was a pretty. We let, and we had leveled up. I think we leveled up between finishing the quest and or finishing the quest and the pirate thing because I think we were level four when we hit that pirate battle. Oh, okay. you, know, you guys are you guys certainly earned it. That's for I'm sure. Pretty sure that shit was epic. So let's talk about that a little bit. I can yeah, business. I remember. <laughs> yeah, that was that was like my first like full scale D and D battle. Yeah, where there was like 
it wasn't just um, the three of us versus like a couple of, you know, baddies. It was like a whole deck of like 20 dudes. And they were all, I mean, we had our crew too, but just the way mechanically, the way things were working out, it was pretty crazy to see. Yeah. And pretty, and pretty, it made a big impact on uh, Runar as well. Yeah, that was a sweet encounter. Like thinking back on it, I, I feel like we, it, like, like thinking back on it in like my designer hat, like I feel like it could have been a little more. There could have been a little bit more, like I don't know, one, not to say one of the ships needed to be attacked by a giant. Like there could have been some timer that did something weird, you know, that like, uh, but like, like, but it was still remember? super, it was still fairly dynamic and there was different stuff going on. But yeah, it was, well, it was yeah. nice to have like this big kind of like, oh, we're, oh yeah, we just, I just killed like two guys. Like we're not like getting murdered by spiders right away. <laughs> yeah. I remember though, it started out us, you know, sending volleys at the other boat. Mm -hmm. Like it started out as like a distance with our, um, like a, they, ranged they, attacks. Yeah, ranged attacks from boat to boat. Yeah. They're like damaging each other's boat. And we did pretty well yeah. with those. Um and then they they boarded us. That's where the legend of the deck wizard mm -hmm. came from, because that mm -hmm. deck wizard kept hurling stuff at us and uh the disdain for the deck wizard. That's oh, been man. a and, uh, recurring nobody, theme. Nobody nobody was like good with ranged attacks at that point. Like we didn't really right. have much in that regard so and read, reading my notes um i was my uh Corcoros was able to identify the ship like mm -hmm. figured out whose ship it was and it was this it was the ship was the black trident yeah right pa captain by captain volchek who has a reputation i guess of being cannibals rumored to be cannibals yeah rumored yeah. to be cannibals so we were like I mean, we have to fucking fight yeah. him now. We can't outrun him. <laughs> right. We don't want to get eaten. Um, yep. So, yeah, battle ensues. We, uh, they, they do a pretty, do a lot of damage to our crew. I think only a few like of the us. party plus like three people lived. Yeah. yeah there like it was a skeleton crew. It was like yeah. the party, the first mate, the captain, basically, right? And then the rest of the crew died. I feel the like there might have oh, been, like, been a couple other guys. Did the first? I feel like know. there was. I don't know if the first mate made it. She might have died. Sasha. I, I don't remember. I thought yeah, I, I remember her doing. That some is kind not of a memorial. memorial. Oh, you know what? She did do a memorial. You're right. But yeah. that was that was for one of the guys that died on the on the Emperor of Waves. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was before the pirate attack. Wow. Okay. Yep. So yeah, I remember for there was Bob. only like yeah. <laughs> she did a eulogy for Bob. I'm looking at my notes. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, he was a stand-up guy, steady hand on the tiller, and cutlass he was. Oh my god, yeah. Good old funny. Bob. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was a brutal fight. <laughs> massive casualties. You guys end up killing most of the pirates, but they take out ninety percent of the the crew. Yeah. Yeah, we had you capture you captured Volchek. Now this this is yeah, kind of it worked an out in a really here. weird way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you want to do you want to describe it, Dave? Or no, I, I want to hear what yeah. you guys think. Go ahead. Oh, okay. all right. Because if I go, I'll go. <laughs> okay. Do it. But uh, yeah, so we we capture Volchek and probably a couple of other dudes. I, I but I feel like we killed like most of everybody we killed everybody uh, and then we found volchek well we we captured volchek i oh no you're right i killed volchek or or During michael the battle. or you yeah. killed somebody you killed did. michael didn't kill i killed volchek mm -hmm. i i took volchek's cool sword mm -hmm. um and then we were like searching we were like oh fuck well we got this ship let's see what's around and we were searching and I was searching the the captain's quarters and found a spyglass, the only spyglass anybody would find for at least three months, <laughs> much to Runar's chagrin. Um, yes, that became a thing. And, of course, kept it. Um, <laughs> and we found a map. 
I don't think that map was there. I feel like there was a map. There was some other stuff. Yeah, well, but then there was like a wardrobe in Volchek's in the captain's cabin, and so I'm like, oh, I'm gonna check out this fucking wardrobe. Yeah, and hey, there's a person in here. Yeah, I think you had gone in there, and for some reason or another, I felt like the need to search it more. Yeah, like maybe you didn't do an investigation in there or something. I can't remember what it was. I probably rolled really bad. So I went in there thinking there's got to be something in there, Mm -hmm. and yeah, we find. Oh, Runar's role finds the pearls in the map fragment under the desk. Yeah, there's like a secret. The there's secret black drawer. pearl. Yeah, a black. It was a black pearl. Yeah, so I find I can't remember. It's like maybe five black pearls and um, that map fragment. Mm-hmm. And and we find Volchek in the tied up. So it turns out there was like basically somebody shape changed to look like Volchek commanding the ship and waging battle against us and we find the actual captain tied up in her wardrobe yeah <laughs> and then um well, i don't know where that break... idea came from to be honest with you. <laughs> I, I i can't remember <laughs> and that that might have been a game day decision i i don't know if that's i'm gonna look at my notes and see if that's even in my notes i don't think it, it was, was i mean like thinking about it it's like even though like what we'll talk about in a little bit like happened and like we can't really go back you just can't go back like that's still thinking about it like i wonder what the fuck that was about like yeah like that's a caper i wish we could have gotten to the bottom of yeah yeah Um, and like the um the dead the dead keel end officials in the in the hold of the ship oh yeah that's right oh yeah (laughs) they were like there was a bunch of dead bodies in the the hold. yeah they were like rotting in the hold of the ship Oh, there were rot grubs and stuff down there. Yeah. So um, I just I just looked at my notes and I had like this whole thing where Volchek had this like uh, monologue after beating you guys in in the oh, combat. After beating <laughs> but because I thought you I thought you guys were going to be super overwhelmed by this encounter. It wasn't. I don't think I designed the encounter to be winnable or like you know I wanted it to be like close. But I, I, I originally had envisioned that it was they, close. I know, but you guys, close, you yeah. guys legit, you know, beat them. And so I think at that point I was just kind of like doing the DM thing where I was like, okay, what would be cool right now? Uh, oh, what makes sense? Okay. This, let's just do that. You know what I mean? Like you just start yep. to, cause I had, I'm looking at my notes and it's like Volchek goes on and talks about some stuff that you, you know, would have been interesting little hooks for. A, you know a second one shot or something but yeah. didn't mm-hmm. did never came into play but yeah you guys yeah. found so you found her and then i to yep. me this is one of the coolest like in in terms of corkeros in his arc yeah. this kind of closed out his arc a little bit but this was kind of a cool encounter chat if you want to talk about that i think you know what yeah I'm talking about. yeah so we brought so we find her um and i i don't remember if we talked to her at all before we, did we a little brought bit. her out on deck. Oh, before no. we brought her on deck. So we brought her out on deck and like there's obviously just fucking dead bodies everywhere, probably. Like the very few members of our crew that are alive. I don't think there were any like I wrote in my notes I have uh most of the crew was decimated. So I think there were a few members of our crew left. But we took out the pirates, and I have out capitalized. So like yeah. we, I think we killed all the pirates, and then yeah, found we killed her. them all, and a few of them fell over. A couple of them fell overboard and got handled by the sharks. That's oh yeah, yes, that's right. That's there were right. sharks too. Yeah, because <laughs> the like one of the last big like fighting positions was like on the boarding planks or something. Mm-hmm. I remember. Uh, anyway, uh, but yeah, so we brought out we brought her out on deck. And we kind of had her, like, she was, I think she was bound initially when we found her. Um, hey, Phoenix, how you doing, buddy? Good to yeah. see ya. Phoenix, your dice are in the mail, yeah, man. She was still tied up. Um, <laughs> yeah, she we, was still she was still tied up. We brought her out on deck, and, like, I don't, I, like, I don't remember. There was, like, some, like, hey, like. We you know, interrogated. We're gonna, yeah, like, t- like what the hell's going on? Um, I feel like we didn't really find anything out about this like shapeshifter thing. Like that was weird, but we didn't 
Like it, a lot of this happened pretty quick. We we're like, she said. I remember she said something about how they picked that guy, this guy up yeah. in Seton or something okay. like that, and he started vying for control of the ship, kind of like oh, okay, vying for kind of like starting a little bit of a mutiny, but how that changed into shape shifting and actually taking over her form, I don't. I, yeah. I'm not sure how that <laughs> that's, happened. That, that's, that came that's, about. Yeah. That's D and D magic, baby. Yeah. And, so there was like some stuff that happened that we weren't aware of. Right. Yeah. yeah. And we had talked about we were gonna like bring her back. Like ultimately, like I think we're like trying you to decide what to do. Yeah. And and with the captain. uh Win Captain Rin Windrun were like, Oh yeah, well she's gonna we'll bring her back and try her like she's like a name There's among probably pirates. A reward. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And she was like, she was like, no, you know, don't like, oh, they'll, I don't want to spend my life in chains or whatever. And so that like really kind of tugged at Corcoros. She like, literally said, I'd rather die than spend my yeah, life in yeah. jail. She, right? yeah. had, she made a strong case for sure yeah. that to not bring her back. And Corcoros is pretty much Corcoros like obliged. holding on to her like while this is all going on and he's like like that's like he feels ultimately like he feels the same way like he doesn't want to lose that freedom and would like do anything not to have that taken from him and so yeah he slit her throat yep and I still remember the look on Kendra's face <laughs> Kendra was, when that happened. On the, on the lawful, or I don't know if she was lawful good, but she was a good just, cleric. Just, yeah. si- just yeah. silence in the Discord channel. Yeah. yeah. Did you, I mean, did uh, you know you were going to do that, Chad, or was that like a last, like last when, moment? That was like, was I, you know what, she, I did. She, I, I she think. made her plea to you guys? Is that when you... Yeah, like I'm like, cause she's she's doing this. She's 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 kind of we're giving her the business, and she's responding, and and like I'm like, what the fuck do I do? Like, like, and I'm like, you know, I I don't think Corcoros is down with that. Like, you know, obviously to myself, I'm like, I don't think I'm down with that. Like, that's not it. I'm like, like I worked up to it. Like, like there was, you know, like you get moments of like that kind of tension before action in, in a game or maybe even in real life, I guess, you know, and like that was definitely building. I was like, I'm going to do something. Okay. I'm like, fuck it. Like I said, fuck it to myself. And then I was like, I slit her throat. And yeah. I remember, I just remember like, Oh, you can do that. Like, <laughs> what? I mean, I, I just remember being like, what? Fucking bad I was so new. I was sneak so attack. New. I yeah. yeah. But the and, it, it, for uh, me, like the 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 narrative significance, not necessarily yeah. for the campaign, but for Corcoros and certainly for Volchek, mm-hmm. like that was to me that was like one of the most beautiful moments of that first season. It was just like yeah. wow, because I I totally understood where you're coming from when you did it. I was shocked that you did it or that Corcoros yeah. did that. I was not expecting that at all. But it was like I that was. That was pretty cool. That was a yeah. cool decision. Yeah. And then I remember, like, I, I, I carried her. I'm, I'm pretty sure I carried her to the edge of the boat, and dropped her into the into the ocean. Yep. And I, I don't remember exactly what it was, but I, I said something that was probably cool about like, you know, back to the waves from when she came or something like that mm-hmm. i don't i remember it being cool and kind of like that but i don't remember exactly what it was but something about like that kind of embodying that freedom and that idea that the sea is where we come from and where we return to yeah that was that was fucking cool that was super fun <laughs> i mostly i just remember like <laughs> kendra being like like i know she was like what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was, oh man, that was epic. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. So, and then, so I don't know, do we pretty much just head back to Salt Marsh at that point? Well, yeah, you, we got, you looted yeah. the boat, you 
you dealt with Volchek, and then, yeah, I think you pretty much made your way back to Dralian at that point. Mm-hmm. For the reward, uh, you handed over this strange metallic blue box, which is really has not a whole lot of significance in the, the, the adventure as written. I mean, and, and I, we, we definitely I, tried to f- figure out what it was. I remember mm-hmm. there was the some back. discussion. There was definitely some, we were discussion. like, why did we risk our lives for this? Let's right. what see is if we thing? can figure out what it is, but that yeah. didn't get too far. And really all you were left knowing by the end was that it, it had great value to, to Aubrick in that um, it would help him rebuild his, shipping uh fleet you know his dynasty his his wealth was tied up with that and and he he gave you guys ten thousand gold pieces which is cr- a crazy amount of gold for fourth level characters um you, you know you split it up obviously between the four of you but or, or however many there were left three, well i think four. three yeah, of because, us yeah and then didn't windrune well, get some yeah windrune i think yeah. windrune windrune got Windrun got um, Adam's character's cut, and I think we gave him a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Well, and then Dralian basically paid for like you know the fam- He gave money to the families of the fallen crew members. Oh, that's and right. Did a yeah. bunch. He, yeah, he he like helped them out because they were obviously that's a pretty big hit when you have twenty guys that just died off the ship. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So I wonder what I wonder what Windrun is up to. I haven't I haven't thought a whole lot about Windrun where That's he is. True. I mean he's out Soul there somewhere. Winter is still out there I'm gonna somewhere. be honest, I haven't either. <laughs> he's probably got a new crew. Oh yeah. He's sure. probably like, I need to get the fuck away from Salt Marsh and these crazy bastards. Yeah. yeah this place is nuts. Um okay, so obviously, yeah, that's pretty much when it ended though, right? Yeah. The first season. Yeah. Now now let me ask you this. Did you at all think that 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 blue box would play a role in in the you know beyond that like when i mean at that point i think we knew we were going to continue maybe or shortly thereafter but right. to me I, that that blue box is the it's still it's, it's still, in play. still in play but like, like the first yeah. the first thing that we were doing after that didn't involve Right, the blue box. It like right. We well right. Like for, Dralian was still like you've if you've been watching this, watching our stream. Dralian was still alive at this point. Yeah, at the beginning of season right. two, he was still alive. Yeah. Um. So spoilers. He's not alive anymore. Yeah, I think at that point, you know, at that point, like, yeah, it was like we we finished that. We were done. We're moving on. We're doing something else. That's kind of where I was at yeah. with it. Yeah, I think that's because well, you had a new character. Yeah. Um uh yeah, and now now we're getting into season 2, but um at that point at the beginning of season 2 like the the box was not on my mind at all. For sure. Right. I definitely remembered it, but um you know, we had the new characters coming on. Uh Runar was in town spending his money on wine Making and a name for himself. And he apparently found himself with a reputation um, that uh, I was yeah, not was... expecting. I was not expecting that at all. Yeah, I wanted to. I wanted all to of sudden, play that up a lot. Yeah, I thought all that of a sudden, fun. all of a sudden, Runar was like the lone survivor of that right. battle with the Black Trident. Single-handedly though... killed Volchek. That was <laughs> yeah. like the ongoing sort got... of like. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like every time I'd hear a different NPC. Like would be like, oh, Runar. Like it, the the story got bigger and bigger. Yeah, <laughs> and that was that was always entertaining. And that really, you know, and realistically, like that's one thing that I think, that's one thing that I really liked about, like that I like about how you've been running this game, and that I liked about that is that that happened because it, you know you look at it like Salmarsh is a small fucking town. Right. Like it's a pretty small. A lot place. happens there. Yeah, right. Well, a lot happens there. It's a small place. Like, yeah. But that's one thing that, like, most of my other games that I've played in, and I don't always, and I don't really do a good job of this as a DM either necessarily, is like, 
Like, oh yeah, like you kill you you kill like one pirate ship in a town of six hundred people, like you're the new king. <laughs> you know? Like you're like legitimate like that's and so I, I think that was really cool that that you know, that we did that or that you kind of incorporated that kind of aspect to it for sure. Yeah, that was fun. It was fun. When I, when I came up, you know, how you know how those ideas are when you're a DM and it's like, Oh, I got to write that down, you know? And I was like, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta have rumors of like, mm-hmm. you know, and then, Oh, a cool one would be like, let's really focus on, you know, Runar since he was the one, since Andy was the one person that was going to continue playing his character He's right. going to be known around town. You know, the, the rumors spin out of control. Like it's way more than what actually happened. People want, believe what they want to believe. And the next thing you know, he's the hero of salt marsh, but you know, you know, to his, to his credit, Runar did a lot of stuff in season two, including the, uh, winning the, uh, the fight club championship yep. that, um, really solidified that. But, um, well, here's yeah. what I want to do. Um, let's take a quick bio break. Uh, maybe 10 minutes. And when we come back, I just want to, we'll just kind of wrap it up and talk a little bit about um, some of the, what I, what I'm interested to hear from you guys is any, if what, what the loose ends are that you can think of from season one that may or may not still be in play. Um, Cause that might give me some ideas too um, for future, future fun. And then we'll talk a sure. little bit about the set in Greyhawk and, and a little bit more about Saltmarsh. So uh, for those of you that are watching, please uh, remember that we are going to be giving away the ultimate naval map pack from CZRPG, our our awesome uh, sponsor. We are honored to have CZRPG as our sponsor. Go ahead and uh, type the keyword CZRPG in the chat, and you will be entered to win a digital copy of the ultimate naval map pack. And we will be back in just uh, a couple of minutes. All right, we'll see you in a little bit. Hello, everybody. We're back here. Uh, it's me, Dave, your humble dungeon master at Beyond Salt Marsh Superior Adventures Guild here with Chad and Andy. And we're talking about uh, season one of our Salt Marsh game, kind of diving back into a little bit of the story and character. And um, at, before we before we took a break, we were talking a little bit about uh, some of the things that happened in that first season. So um, if you're interested in kind of where this thing got started, check it out. If you've been watching, thank you. We appreciate it. Uh, we are doing a giveaway. Uh, yeah, let's do a cheers actually. Cheers. I'm going I'm to kind of hide the brand, but cheers. I'm having a beer. Let's roll, my friend. Yep. Cheers. Um, yeah. Anybody who knows between your fingers was now able to tell what you're drinking. I know. It's pretty obvious. <laughs> mm. Mm. It's an ESB. Do we have to hide brands? I don't no, know. I don't think so. I don't know why I did that. Here you go. Look at that. It's tasty. <laughs> Bent paddle, oh, here's here's yeah. my Glenlivet nice. glass. Nice. Margarita. Holiday, holiday margarita. bundle. And he's having a margarita. A See, that's, aluminum that's beautiful. Cup. We can all have what we want. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so uh, first off, folks, if you are interested in entering to win the Ultimate Naval Map Pack, which has tokens and maps for your naval-based campaigns and adventures, it's really, really nice. Uh, the people at CZRPG did a really great job putting it together. And you know what? Go check out their website, too, when you have a chance. You can actually uh, sign up for their email list and Christian will send you free maps. It's it's awesome. Mm-hmm. So if you haven't done that, please do it. CZRPG.com. Otherwise, enter the code word CZRPG into the chat here. 
Here, I'll show you how it's done. I'm going to do it here. And we'll we'll get you some. We'll, we'll get you if you win. You will get some cool stuff. Yeah, you will win the Ultimate Naval Map Pack. <laughs> that uh, specific thing. The other thing I wanted to mention is that if you, if anybody here in the chat has questions for us, uh, you want to throw some questions our way, please do so. We'd be happy to answer them. If you are interested in asking us anything, please do. Um, we were just about to kind of talk about loose ends <clears throat> from season one. Loose ends. Things that there are some. Loose ends. Yeah. So yeah, let's let's dive into that. Things that possibly are uh, carrying over. Maybe they're still at play. Maybe they're not. But they're still loose ends in your characters' minds or in your your minds as a player. What do you think, uh, Andy? Why don't we start with you? Well, the box. For sure, Dralian's box is still in our possession. We I actually, don't really consider that a loose end. <laughs> we recovered it again, right? We have How it we... firmly in grasp. Yes. We don't know what it does, but it is not loose. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> but the thing is, the thing is, it was very important to Dralian, and mm -hmm. we still don't know what's inside of it. So, to me, that it could be empty. Maybe Dralian emptied it. I don't think so. Yeah, like but, close to 40 people died for this goddamn box. Yeah. He paid us a ton of money to recover this thing. <laughs> and um, so well, I got to imagine. The other thing, to too, that I will interject is that the at the beginning of season two, not to get too far into it, but things had changed considerably. It had been a couple of weeks, maybe. Uh, one since week. It had been one week. Thank you. It had I been one week. Notes. and Great notes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Things had changed. Dralian had had started his his business was starting to flow. If you recall from the sort of intro to season two, there were jobs aplenty in Salt Marsh. Things were really kind of turning the corner because of you know the implication is because of this recovery of mm -hmm. of this important whatever it is inside this box. Right. Um. So that's what, for sure. Um. How did you guys? Sec well, it gets too far into ahead. season two. That's no, fine. Go ahead. Oh, okay. What else do you have? I mean, does that really matter? But, yeah, go ahead, Chad. What do you yeah. think? No, I don't um, care. I mean, like, I guess other, yeah, other, like, loose ends, like, you know, obviously I'm playing a new character. I'm, 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 I'm now two characters different from there, but, like, what's happened with that character? Because we just narratively kind of wrote him out. He left. He took his money got onto a ship and and left which is something i wanted to bring up i'm actually as as much as now i i do want to revisit corkeros at some point whether it's in this game or i play him i play the 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 idea of him in a different game like i'm glad that that in retrospect i'm glad i switched characters because i would have been hard jonesing us to get the hell out of out of out of salt marsh mm, i would sure. like like the first the, you know the first like season two you know we got out of salt marsh a bit we went out and did some other things but then we were Eventually. like really logged into salt marsh like doing a bunch of stuff and i would not have wanted that i would have i would have wanted as that as, as, as i would have wanted to do that less than i did when we did it right as Corcoros, I would have wanted, I, I would have really been chomping at the bit to like get out of town, go out onto the ocean, explore, get into some, whatever those shenanigans would have been, right? Um, and then I guess, like, what's up with Winder? Where's, where's Winder gone? Like, I'm, you know, I, like I said, I said before the break, I haven't really thought about it. Uh, but now that I've thought about it, I want to fucking know. Like, mm. like he seemed like a cool cat. You know, like it would be interesting to see him, yeah. especially like, well, I don't know, in Runar's, like, Eren's not around, or Corcoros isn't around anymore. But like, if if Runar and Windrun were to cross paths again, it would definitely be unusual <laughs> for Windrun, mm -hmm. I, I think, if anything. Um, yeah, I think. Like it would be interesting. It it would really be interesting to know what to find out. I don't know how we would do it, but to find out what actually went down on the Emperor of the Waves. And I like like having found out things in season two and season three, 
um, related to Aubrey and um, Byron's character and like that whole like organization of the Seekers. Like I can imagine some of maybe what like maybe what we'll find out like when when and when and if we ever find out like what's in the box and what does that mean for these people like we'll be able to like draw some assumptions about what really happened and maybe who knows maybe we'll find somebody who's like yeah I was fucking there like we're half a world away but yeah I sank that fucking ship and I never got that box because of that whatever right. <laughs> Because there was a cult of loth there, <laughs> you know <laughs> that saved the sh- that saved the box. Um, but it would be it would be super interesting. It'll be super cool to find out. It would be super cool to find out what that was, what happened, and then I'm I am looking forward to finding out like when when we figure out this stuff out, when we're able to get into the box and kind of get to the bottom of that that whole like arc arc like multi arc caper you know that we're in right now yeah yeah it's weird it's, like... it's weird because dralian was really a throwaway npc like there's no he, there's no connection in in the there's mm-hmm. a whole first chapter of salt marsh doesn't to my recollection it's been a while since i read it but no mention of of dralian at all until you get to chapter 4 salvage operation and they talk about yeah. him as this sort of shipping magnet kind of um entrepreneur um industrialist kind of guy you know mm-hmm. but no connection and so mm-hmm. i was kind of i was kind of like blown away by that i was like i don't know there's more to this guy you know there's yeah, more to you would have thought that, that would have been something that they would have put in the first chapter like hey he's in the like his house is on the map he's <laughs> right yeah. this is who he is this is this is a little bit of what he's his context is Right, and he's like super rich. Yeah, and he lives in Salt Marsh. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. Super, he should yeah. be. He should have a little more weight to him for sure. But at the same time, right? Like we live in Duluth, <clears throat> or you're from Duluth, right? Like, and you look at the like the history of Duluth, and the people, the money that used to be in this town, even when it was a pretty small town, albeit you know the furthest inland seaport on the planet. Um, oh, yeah, it was like the but it was a lumber barons and the, yeah, but it was but it, for a long time it was a, it was a it was a, a fairly small place, but there was a lot of money here. Yeah, mm-hmm. and yeah. so I kind of see it. I kind of see it like I see that connection that way from that kind of perspective. But still, you're right. It's it's like he would he would be really? a big why deal. are you in salt marsh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, was the Westwind Trading Dave? Was the Westwind Trading Company like was that in the in the book, I don't remember. No, is that, that in the was, book or was that, that a was thing part that you of, came so up with? So the Westwind Trading Company was Dralian's business mm-hmm. that had been floundering because of things that we won't right. talk that I won't divul- divulge yet because you haven't really peeled out back the layers on that one fully. But um, really, but the the like an onion. Yeah, we still got the journal. The that's true. You do. Yeah. Um, but no, the the Westwind Trading Company was something that I pulled actually from from your backstory for Corcoros, and I okay. dropped yep. that as a as a like a mic drop during yeah. the um, at the very end of season one when Corcoros yep. and Whimsy and Runar go to Dralian deliver the box. There's a scene where you guys deliver the box, and Dralian says, "Now my you know my company, the Westwind Trading Company, can rise again." And I think at that point, even in the in the audio, it might even be fun to go back and listen to the audio of that last because you're like, "Fuck you!" <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, uh, you know, and I, I, do I remember, remember that. that. Yeah, I remember that. So yeah, I do I, have I, a tendency to swear at people when they do yeah. really cool stuff like that. <laughs> but I did. I pulled the I pulled that name out of your backstory and put nice. it in there because because Corcoros, I, and I don't remember exactly what it was, but Corcoros had been involved in a a heist i think or some sort of a raid on the west wind trading company oh man uh i'd have to yeah i think that's i think that's dig it up. I, like i remember i f- uh, so i feel like there was 
Yeah, like we got like whether or not it was like he was on a pirate ship at the time or was like on like a, a like a like a he was on a ship, but I feel like yeah, there was like a some kind of deal or caper or whatever gone that got that went sour like we got turned on i do you know what i do have on my notes here it does say uh hey we're looking for this box for this guy west wind trading company and then i in parentheses or i'm sorry in 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 uh mm-hmm. uh parentheses parentheses yeah. yeah i said parentheses and i thought quotation marks uh. but yeah in parentheses I, I I do have the company we were made outlaw by, oh, and I yeah, don't know was... if I ri- I don't know if I had written that at the time of I don't think I wrote that at at the first session like when I wrote that that paragraph whatever it was it was the later, name yeah. came from your backstory and then I dropped it in there and that became that became part of the um, the drowning I don't have story. Access. Do I still have access to him in roll twenty? I might have to Probably. go and look. Maybe. Oh. I'll go um, look, but yeah, like yeah. I, cause yeah, cause I remember that there was, there was something there, like that, and I remember you and I talking about it. I feel like I had an idea for something, and I, I don't think I don't know that I came up with that name, or maybe I did, and you had you were, cause I, I, I feel like I remember when we were kind of formulating this thing, you were making characters, and you were like, hey, what, what like, what's, like, you have this written here, like, what's that about? Mm-hmm. And I don't remember. That is something I that I have... really like to do. I mean, you know, most DMs are the same, but I, I love to take people's backstories and mine it for plot hooks and in ways to connect people a little bit more broadly to the to the narrative. But I yeah. do not have Corcoros. And, <clears throat> and that's the beauty of, anymore. you know, that's the beauty of uh, collaborative storytelling is like, where did the name come from? Not sure. It could have been in your, you know, maybe you did, maybe I, regardless, yeah. it became, it became a key, you know, organization that um, is still at play. You know I mean? Mm-hmm. Dralian, you know, spoiler alerts is gone, but his sister, uh, who we won't get into too much about Sophia, uh, but yeah, you know, there's a whole thing with her taking over the the company and that sort of thing. What about uh, what about other loose ends? Anything else? So we we got Corcoros. What's he been up to? Well, Rune, Windrune. What's the, he's uh, the box? Oh, sorry, yeah, the box and um, the map fragment that Runar found mm. is is one loose end that I can think of. Talk about well, that for a minute. Haven't we figured out the map fragment is part of? that whole seeker map thing well i or is that a I, different map we don't we don't i guess we have a hunch mm. the thing is is um there's there's um in season 2 we encounter a storyline where there are map fragments mm-hmm. to the greater mission that comes about in season 2 um but it's not entirely certain, I guess, in our minds yet, how our map fragment works into any of that. Um, if it's part of that same thing, if it's a completely separate thing. And that was something that you pulled out of uh, Volchek's. Yeah, birth. so out of Volchek's yeah. cabin yep. that I found, the <clears throat> investigation I did of her cabin after you found, or after Corcoros found the captain in the... I, that's what it was going back over my notes. I realized that Corcoros went in there, found the captain in the in the um the wardrobe. wardrobe. And then I got the idea, oh well we didn't really do a thorough search of that quarters. So I went in there and found the black pearls and the map fragment. Crazy. This is fun because I there's a lot of <laughs> lot of little things that I forget about. Yeah, so it's like there's <clears throat> these loose ends that we could dedicate time to, but sometimes they get put in the back burner for things that are happening in front of us at the time. So it's yeah, it's kind of like real life in that way. Like you got this thing that's like on your mind. Mm-hmm. You know, you wanna you wanna get to it, but you gotta deal with what's coming at you. Mm-hmm in the moment i do that's what i really like we've done i think all of us together have done a really good job with downtime as well throughout the Mm -hmm. the three seasons in terms of utilizing it narratively for some interesting 
interesting character development things, but also uh, some elements of of uh, plot, which I think mm-hmm. has been really cool. So that's been that's been fun to watch and be part of. Yeah, for that's sure. that's something I've really liked. That's something I think not enough people like do. Like it may be in game, and obviously I don't see every game, but I feel like like so many games that I've played in like there's no room to breathe. Like I played in a game for two and a half years before this fifth edition. And it was like maybe a month of in game time, actual time, you know? Mm -hmm. And like, I remember having multiple conversations, like, like when we're fighting like a big bad guy and it's like, wait a minute, how long have we been doing this? This is like week one. This is Friday. Fuck. (laughs) <laughs> like there's no breathing room, you know, and, yeah. and the downtime, I think the downtime, like we've done some really interesting things with the downtime and obviously the things that, that I, I, I really appreciate the things that I was able to do with Iren in, in his downtime, but just with everybody across the board, like it really helps kind of fill that, those gaps and build, build more of the story as we're able to like decompress you know, right. or, or, uh, or, 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 you know, and, and kind of figure out, oh, yeah, this is what's been going on. This is how we're dealing with it, as opposed to just like, yeah, you know, we're in campaign mode. We're just going, going, right. going, yeah. <laughs> you know, like the um, how we've been able to do, yeah, convert when we transition from level to level and gain new mm-hmm. abilities, like having a downtime for those where we can role play new abilities coming about, I think was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of times it's just like, okay, now you're level, you know, five. Yeah. Like all of a sudden you, you have like 20 new ability, not 20, but you have have a couple new abilities that just come out of nowhere. You know, Mm -hmm. it, it makes sense, you know, I think to have a little bit of downtime to kind of explain where those things come from. Yeah, it's sometimes it's cool to just okay. Yep, your level, you're the next level, and it's fine. Yeah, but it, it, it is it definitely depends, nice yeah. to have those like, those like narrative and collaborative. Like, here's your training montage. Yeah, you know, here's it, he, here's your rocky scene. Well, and there's know? there's definitely there's definitely s- like pivotal level ups. Like, there's certain For level sure. ups that are really important. Like third level. You know, we we started at third, but like in a in a campaign that starts at one, third level is really an important level because Huge. you you take on a you know a subclass or an archetype or whatever you want to call it, you know, and similar with you know fifth level, you know. So for me, it was like this is such a great opportunity to storytell. Like, why would we right. why would we pass that up if if we can make it fun? Why not do it? So I think hey, that's exactly. been. I'm glad that you guys have been into that because for me, that's I. I I've been in games where it's like, okay, now you're level seven. It's all good. You woke up, yeah. long rest. You're good to you go. Woke up you know? like, Boom. Yeah, and that's fine. But that's not the kind of that's just not the kind of way right. that I like to do it. So I was but. Kevin Bacon, and now I'm the Rock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but Here's yeah, especially. Or go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, I was go just gonna say, especially for like when Runar transitioned from being a champion fighter to a mm. battle master, mm-hmm. I yeah. felt that required some kind of. Yeah you know, moment, you know. Yep. And, and we, you I know, that's, that was a lot of fun. we've been able to use uh, Tasha's for, you know, for, yeah. that's a great example, how we use Tasha's cauldron of everything. Uh, we, we've used the downtime rules in, is that in Xanathar's, I think, right? Well, both the DMG and then they kind of um, expand level them up bit. a bit. Uh, expanded is a good word. Yeah. In, in Xanathar's, yeah. they kind of so made I, them a little bit better. You know, we've, we've been able to use, you know, multiple books in terms of, you know, it's nice to be able to use the books that you have on your shelf as often as possible since you pay for them. That's right. But yeah, <laughs> so, so I, it's been nice to be able to utilize that stuff. Uh, you know, one thing that's kind of interesting about, you know, a weekly game is the leveling up uh, frequency. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. You know, obviously, like we're you know we're not leveling up. It's not a fast leveling up process for yeah. us. I mean, it takes time, really you true. know. And and I think and I'm doing that deliberately because mm-hmm. you know I know that the narrative, in my mind, the narrative kind of not requires it, but I think it lends itself to a little bit slower progression 
in a in a game where you're trying to tell a long form story but if you're just slogging through a campaign with your friends it's great to level up fast I, you know i've been in games where you level up a lot faster and in this yeah. one i've sort of put the i pumped the brakes a little bit to allow for more of that early game development character development I, which i think is really important um you know we we start at a low level we don't know but usually we don't know we don't have a 30 page backstory right usually it's kind of a bare bones we're just getting started figuring out who we are giving room for that to happen i think is is fun um, i agree i it's definitely important to be able to like cuz if you level up too fast obviously sometimes it's great but if, you're right if you level up but if you level up a little slow you can grow into it and you can experience that level more like you can really like cuz it's one like like, you know, if you level up, say, from 5th to 6th level in, like, three sessions, you know, like, like, I, like okay, I'm not experiencing 5th level. Like, mm -hmm. by the time I get to that, that session where I'm leveling up into 6th, I might not have ever used any of my 5th level abilities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, That's it's, it's, it's definitely... It's it's definitely nice to get a little used to the shirt that you're wearing now, you know, before you get a new shirt or or another layer, right? Um, yeah, I'm I'm definitely appreciative of the slightly slower leveling. Nice, because yeah, well, it's not I, too not slow. Curious. It's not yeah, yeah it's, it's not, not too slow. slow. It's not too slow because I've been in games not necessarily in fifth edition, but I've been in games that have been like. All right, it's year two. Can we get uh, like? Can we get our next level now, please? Right. Yeah, yeah. You know, but it needs to make sense narratively. And then, mm -hmm. you know, like there was I can't remember what level it was for you guys, but there was we're kind of getting into off off season one. But there was a there was an, a level in season two where that we just there was never I wanted it to be a, a, a one of those like downtime levels because it was a significant level for especially for like the warlock like weird for shit happens know. to warlocks yeah. you know what I mean like all of a sudden they've got these crazy things happening but so I wanted it to be significant but there was there just it was hard to fit it in because there was so much going on in the in the game so it was like it kept getting pushed back I think it would there was like a four session delay from when I wanted to do the level up to when we actually <laughs> got to it because you guys just yeah, kept I remember charging that. ahead and I was like well yep. if you guys you know it just didn't make sense to take downtime I think it was during the Sawajin uh you know battle and all that kind of stuff but anyways well, I'm, yeah, I'm glad. I think it's, it was that's good feedback to hear from you guys yeah I remember like I hearing know that we we're gonna level up soon and then it was like is it happening? Yeah. Is it happening? All right. It... I think it was yeah. fifth. I think you wanted it. Like, if I'm remembering right, I think you wanted to do it at fifth. Mm -hmm. And we did it at sixth. Because I remember, I remember we did one at sixth and we did a kind of a super small one at seventh. Mm -hmm. um, but the big, that first like big one that we did where it was like, hey, really think about what you're doing for your level up, what you want to do, how you want that to happen. Yeah, like, like that was that, that was sixth because that. I'm looking at, at Monk at sixth level. That's when I got key powered strikes. And mm -hmm. that's like that's when I kind of I remember formulating that kind of concept that yep. I, that we did. Yep. Um at the for, at the Dwarven Forge. Yeah. So There's I would the, bet you know, like that, you okay. wanted to do it at fifth. The Dwarven Forge is not that you're Eren's not around anymore, spoiler alert. Or he is, but he isn't. Right. He's not present. He's, He's not, not currently present. present. Currently. Yeah. But there's a huge loose end for him right there is is uh, Mafra and her son, who I can't remember that off the top of my head what his name is, but um, they really, they really – they took a liking to Eren. Like they truly enjoyed having him around. Like there could have been – I get everybody this, wanted know. everybody wanted yeah, Aaron yeah. and Maffer to, you know, get after it. As there was a dude. strange attraction happening there. Yeah, there was. Yeah. And they they <laughs> that that little boy really liked him. You know, Aaron, yeah. and so that was you know that was kind of fun too to role play that yeah. stuff. But anyways, that was good. Um, I yeah, I did really appreciate that. Yeah. Well, I'm, I, that's good nice. feedback on the leveling up because I'm always I'm always you know you you balance it as a DM. It's like you want to you want to 
progress and have them working towards, but you don't want to do it too quick, especially when you're playing every week, which is the best yeah. way to play. I, it's I, so weird. <laughs> yeah. Playing every week is definitely for... the way to go. Yeah. If you can, if you can make it happen. Cause like our curse of Strahd game, we play every other week and it, it's oftentimes like hard to remember. Yeah. The vibe, mm -hmm. you know, you got to jump. It's, yeah. it's, it's harder. A bit... It's harder for me to role play that, that, character like i can get back into it but it's yeah. usually by about it, an hour or two it takes an session. hour yeah yeah mm -hmm. and like uh i gotta jump from character abilities to another character's abilities and you know it takes some time sometimes and um, yeah. weekly games yeah. are the way to go yeah uh anything any other comments you guys want to throw in about the plot of season one or the any loose ends that we didn't talk about or anything like that because the last topic that I want to talk about is just kind of the setting. Um, so if there's anything else. Yeah, let's move on. Let's move okay. on. Okay. Yeah. All right. So yeah. um, one of the things that I had written down here is talking a little bit about the town of Saltmarsh itself. <laughs> oh, um, Saltmarsh. Yep. And, you know, <laughs> we, we didn't do a ton of exploration of Saltmarsh necessarily in season one. But I guess the question I kind of had was like. What are some what are some of the memorable like things about Saltmarsh that you like? Oh god. As a, as a setting for this particular, you know, book. For this book. Here. Like it's a like it like we've said, you know, it's a super small town. Like yeah. it's I You can walk the length of it in in like less than 10 like 20, minutes. 20 yeah, minutes. Like, yeah, in like in like 5 minutes. minutes like But, but there's right a lot edges, of like Yeah. There's a lot of shit there like the fucking vamp. There's a goddamn yeah. buried vampire. Like well, that, that gets into season two. But well, whatever. Yeah, but we didn't, we didn't, we didn't get to know. Salt Marsh we didn't get to know one. season two. Yeah. Until, uh, Salt Marsh until season but like two. Yeah. you have that. There's like the mysterious like wizard. Yeah. Like in that in that other place that it took three seasons before yeah. we finally got to that part of town. The tiefling on the edge of town selling yeah, weird, yeah. weird goods. The mysterious house out in the border of the town. Right. Like, yeah, they yeah, packed they, a like, lot into it, into this relatively yeah. sort of obscure it's little... It's deceptive. It's yeah. deceptive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's like this sleepy little town, supposedly. And the more you get into it, like it's literally like you go out to the borders of Salt Marsh and shit's going down. Well, here's the thing. And then though, it's like... like you yeah. grew up in Duluth, Dave. You're from Duluth. I live in Duluth. You've been to the Iron Range. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is every fucking town on the Iron Range. Yeah, <laughs> you know, right. there's right. like, yeah. oh, it's this normal town, or oh, even wait. Duluth, really. That yeah. guy killed fucking fifteen guys like a bunch of years ago, and it's weird. And the guy, <laughs> his neighbor, is like a drug is a drug runner. Like, that's not necessary. That's an extreme characteristic, but like, right. like. This is super normal in some ways. It's yeah. weird there's in D and D, like, but yeah, like there's a small town hidden history that yeah, you don't really that's know. A good way to say it. Un unless yeah. you're like in it, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah, right. Um, that the outside world doesn't really know about, even even with like law enforcement and stuff like that. You know what I yep. mean? Right. Like those those small town cops, they know who the troublemakers are. Right, they 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 have like an idea of what's going on, you know that kind of vibe, and I thought I thought that was captured really well with in Salt Marsh, you know the. Um, that was the one weird thing about the Fight Club, though. Like, yeah, oh, it's Salt a Marsh has a Fight Club. It's, it's super secret Fight Club. There's like yep. six hundred people who live there. You really think this is super secret? <laughs> it's not so secret. <laughs> yeah, no, it's an it's like underground boxing. Basically. It wasn't. Right. It wasn't like, like a everybody Alan knows about it. Club. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. It was. Yeah. It wasn't. Yeah, half the town's <laughs> guard is probably there in the crowd. Right. You know, or fighting. I think. I don't, did we, I don't think we had cameras on. We didn't, we weren't doing video. I don't then. know. I wish we, we were because not. I jumped I out of my, I jumped out of my chair. Dude, I was like, ah, I huh? know that was, that was amazing. I season can't believe two, I went out in the so second loaded. round. It has, I went out yeah. so fast. Yeah. I rolled uh, so bad in that encounter. Season one set the stage and then yeah. season two just like went, went yeah. out of control. And now we're, now we're thousands of miles away from Salt Marsh. 
I well, and that was the thing. Alligator man. Like it, that was the thing. In retrospect, there was so much going on in Salt Marsh. We had to almost struggle to leave. <laughs> That's true. You know what I mean? Like there was stuff. There was still hooks in Salt Marsh that we could have. I was. Yeah, I don't ever want to. The day you guys decided to leave, there. I was throwing you guys hooks. Yeah, I don't ever yeah. want to go back there. That, that, <laughs> I know. I'm almost afraid to go back. No, yeah. No, that town is um, effed. It'll be a lot different from when you left it. Let's put it that way. Yeah, but yeah, but at will. the same time, we got history there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah at some level, maybe we do owe it to although Aaron's whoever is anymore. whoever. Sir, when we rescue Erin <clears throat> from wherever Aaron is or do whatever that is like maybe we do owe it to like the one guy who will be left in salt marsh to kill all those fucking vampires <laughs> that you yeah, know are gonna like maybe so we're like level 12 or something i don't know it's Man, quite I, hope we're bigger than a... level, I hope we're bigger than level 12 it's quite <laughs> it's quite possibly a 30 days of night situation in salt yeah. marsh right now oh god i'm gonna picture it it's like <laughs> It's 30 days of night now, but by the time we get there, it's like the opening, like, 15 minutes of Blade. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's it's like going to be the, interesting. It, oh, it's, it's the Blood Rave, and then just Blade. Just <laughs> It's going to be us, just, like, machine guns. Just, oh. ah! Well, and, like, <laughs> is that is that our fault? Yes. <laughs> we kind of knew about that. You know, that's what it was man, happening. All of it. See, if you think about character, that is if that's some stayed, of the coolest. That happened? That's some of the coolest stuff because you guys you guys essentially left as heroes, right? Like you're the heroes yeah. of Salt Marsh. But you somewhat left tarnished. You, somewhat tarnished a by little, Byron. Uh, a little bit. A little <laughs> not bit. Heavily. But, but you but mainly you left in good in in sort of the good graces of the, yeah. the town council and the people. Yeah. However, you left this gaping, like, huge hole of evil lurking. So it's it's right. very ironic. There's I think there's a there's a cool irony that mm-hmm. that created. And then the other the other thing, not to get too far into season three, but the other cool like juxtaposition was when you got to Monmerg. You, you know, you had been famous. Runar it was famous. The whole team was famous. You got to Monberg, nobody gave a shit who you were. Nobody cares. Right. They don't they don't know no, who you are. Nobody wanted to give dudes. us a job. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All we wanted to yeah, do you was, had to... we were just looking for work. Yeah. People just kept trying to kill us for looking yep. for work. Yep, you murdered everyone that you applied for jobs with. We didn't kill all of them <laughs> until later. No, you got a job from Alesco. He he took We eventually got a way. job. That's true. Yeah. He seems like a good guy. <laughs> He does seem like a good guy. Um, all right. So obviously there's we, there's a whole lot of love. I don't know how you do this. Is that what it is? Is that there's a whole lot of love for Salt Marsh uh, as a town and as a setting. I, I, it's been super fun. I, I enjoyed it a lot. What about Greyhawk? Like for me, this is the first time I've ever run a game in Greyhawk. I, you know, it has caused me inspired me to do a ton of research on Greyhawk. So I know a lot more obviously about it than I ever did before. Um, what do you guys think of the, the larger world that we're playing in this Greyhawk? Pretty or... awesome. I mean, I was surprised when you guys pointed out that map. Um, mm, Anna like Myers map. Yeah. The Anna B Myers map um, mm-hmm. was kind of my intro to the greater world that we're in and i was like holy shit (laughs) you know there's like cities there's this vast ocean this is a google map style map of this place yeah it's amazing (laughs) yeah and it's you know it, it really puts into perspective kind of like the possibilities um when we get into it for a whole you know, one of our seasons with one little small town like Salt Marsh, like mm-hmm. what the capabilities of the greater world of Greyhawk could be. Um, it's pretty awesome. You know, I was so surprised to see that. Like, that was just like just kingdoms, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, sweet. it's, uh, it's, and you guys would probably know way more about it than like the history of it than I do. Um, 
a little bit. Like Greyhawk was like I've I like historically I've I've played a couple of times in Greyhawk, but like I really grew up playing D and D in the Forgotten Realms. Like from like an official standpoint of of campaign settings. But we, I mean, I've played in Greyhawk a bit. I know a little bit about it. Um, and I've learned more about it, like, researching because of shit in this game, you know, or because we're playing in this game, you know, Dave discovered Lord Gazumba, and so now I'm watching Lord Gazumba, and so now my mind gets blown, like, every fucking day watching that guy streams on Greyhawk stuff. It's it's cool because it's a like there's a lot of stuff going on in Greyhawk and we're really hitting this very small kind of part of it and it's it's cool to know that there's a bunch of stuff going on. Sometimes it's annoying because you're like, okay, this is cool, but there's also like this and 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 all all that stuff. But yeah, it's 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 been fun. It's it's nice to play in a place that feels like at least for me it helps it feel more lived in mm. right like Dave you've done a really good job i think of of kind of bringing in these things that you know whether or not we like get into them in game or not like it's enough to like spark our player mind and be like and then we google it a little bit cuz that shit happens and you're like, oh, okay, like that's what that thing was, you know, and it helps kind of fill out the greater world a little bit more. Yeah, um, like little little hints and Easter eggs that yeah. sort of lead you to a greater sort of setting. Yeah. And that's and it's that's and that's been really nice because that helps I guess at least for me where I am in, you know, in gaming and in storytelling and in that, like it 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 doesn't it doesn't make me feel like I'm drowning in the setting. It it helps kind of ground it like, okay, I can see where we're at. I can see like, these are the players. These are the things around us. This is like our place. This is kind of where we're at. And that helps kind of ground us, um, you know, in the story of the world. And it, and it, and it makes it super interesting in that way, you know, kind of, Tolkienizes it in a way, right? Kind of like it's this huge, over insane picture that right. helps make the Hobbit make sense and be the best of the Lord of the Rings. Anyway, wow. that's a different story. Wow. Yeah. Wow, we just we just got into some stuff. You know <laughs> what I think is, you know, there's like so Runar his his story, his backstory is very tied to that Keeland salt marsh mm -hmm. region. You know, he he fought at the Battle of Bale Keep. Uh, you know, there's some things that happened there in his backstory that are very related to Keeland in that southern end. Tenok, you know, his he's really from that. Um, uh, what's that region called in the Amadio that he's from? The um, Ooh, I, I'd have to look the, at Am, the Amica, the Amica region. I think it's called. You know, he's from a very specific region of the Amadio. But if you start thinking about like Byron. And and uh, and even Theo, uh, to a greater extent, actually, they're both Gradzul, which is still in the Keelan Empire, but the backstory for Theo really connects to um, uh, the Great Kingdom and right. the, the Lord Protectors, and so his his story is That's true. is embedded yeah. into a, right. a much different. There's a whole different, um, I don't know, like sphere of 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 story behind that, that we may or may never get into, but maybe we do in a different campaign. Maybe that's the next campaign or something. I don't know, but we've talked about some ideas. Um, it looks like we just lost Andy for whatever reason. Andy, we lost you, your video. Um, <clears throat> what? Are, so yeah, Greyhawk has been super fun to play in. Um, hmm, interesting. Oh, hey, I got you back. Yeah. Hey, there you are. I don't see either one of you on Ninja anymore, but That's I see That's because you. you're not in Ninja anymore. I, I can, see myself in I Ninja. can see you on the stream. Okay, I'll disconnect from... We just went offline. Oh, wait, you just came back on.
I, I feel like Twitch is like frozen. Yeah, yeah, we just went off. Like Twitch is offline. Yeah, Twitch we're, is. We're frozen. offline. Yeah, we're not. Uh, we're not live anymore. It says. Oh really? Yeah. <clears throat> That's weird. Did I swear? Did I swear too much? Did we get pulled? I don't know. Yeah, but why why would it interfere with her? Yeah, like, that's guys true. dropped out a ninja. Yeah. <clears throat> it could have it could be an OBS thing. Yeah. Maybe OBS had a hiccup. I don't know. Um Yeah, we were having fun discussion there. Well, we're it says that we're reconnected. Let me do a refresh on my Twitch. Still spinning circle on Twitch for me. Oh, I see us moving now. Oh. Can't. All right. I think we're are we back? I think we're back on now. I have no idea what happened. But... <laughs> Let's see how much of a delay there is. Oh, Vamp Wickman, Vamp Wickman sees us. Hey, we're still here. I don't know. We don't know what happened, Vamp. We got booted and then now we're back. I think. Yeah. Did we, did, was it something we said? We're back now. We're back. Right, right. Um, so yeah, uh, we were just talking about Greyhawk, the wider world. I'm still jittery though. Um, no, it, maybe not. Th uh, Theo, are you, uh, Michael? Are you are you watching? Where is Michael right now? Is he on vacation somewhere? He's chiming in on Discord. Yeah, yeah he's that. somewhere. He's on maybe he's on his like... own real life adventure somewhere. <laughs> somewhere in the south. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Hope you're having a good time. We miss you. Uh, we'll see you. We'll see you next week. But. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, that's that's really all all the notes that I had written down was just kind of talking a little bit about the story and your characters and then sort of the greater world. Um, I've been having a blast. I think season one was really fun because, again, it was a surprise in terms of let's just play a short arc. And, you know, by the time we're done with this arc, the world will be back to normal. The pandemic, you know, this this crazy, weird virus will be over. You know, this won't last long. And then the next thing you know, it's like, well, I have so much time on my hands because I I'm unemployed. I'm gonna let's develop something a little bit more. Let's let's go deeper. Mm -hmm. And that's where we launched into season two. So I don't know. I think at some point we could, you know, once Michael and and Kirk are back and with us, we could do a season two recap because oh. there's season two is like 27 episodes. Out. Yeah, yeah. Everything mm -hmm. comes out in season two. All our current trajectory. Yeah, that's some of the best moments you know, yeah, season two really blows up. Yeah. Some really fun stuff. So yeah, I don't know. Is there anything else that you guys want to want to dive into or should we, uh, uh, should we wrap it up? We don't, we don't need, we don't have a specific end time. We can wrap it up whenever we want. Yeah. Yeah. I don't shoot the shit too. I don't know. That's true. <laughs> Does anybody, uh, anybody in the chat have any questions for us? Anyone interested in asking any questions whatsoever? Yeah, free. Vamp, Vamp Wickman. What? Yeah, ask us what a question. Question has been burning <laughs> in your mind yeah. about either these dudes or the game that they're playing. Yeah, what's Nightbot? Are you a real person? I don't think you are. <laughs> if if you are, well, there's you're... a couple other A10, Balfrin. Yeah. Hey guys, ask us a question. Commander Root. And while you're at it, type CZRPG into the chat so that you can be yeah, entered yeah. to win. Yeah. Win so much. Yeah, right. We, we, dropped a, we dropped a few viewers when whatever happened, happened. And, I'm sure uh, we did. And now, now less people will have a chance to win. Vamp, that's a great question. Who enjoys playing or DMing more? I'm going to answer that question first mm -hmm. because I saw it first. And uh, <laughs> I like to talk because I don't Do know. Do it because you're good at it. It's, Talk in it, the it's hard. I like, I really enjoy playing. Um, I really like, but I re I think I, I think I like DMing more, but I really like my, my playing really gets up there in my like scale um, with a group that we can really do the cool stuff like explore make cool interesting character moments and, and choices and 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 where that storytelling like buy-in is really high like i remember some of my favorite campaigns over the years like where we had like a really good dm but then everybody at the table was like every session you know everyone's firing on all cylinders like everyone's like 
we're really into it. We're doing really cool stuff. We're having a really good time, you know, and, and we're enjoying our company. And I think about some of the other sessions where I've played in and it's been like, like I'm having fun or this person's having fun and something's not jiving. Um, yeah, but I, I do like, I, I do love DMing. It's, it's a lot of fun. I don't know what it is about DMing that I like the most. Probably, I like it's probably the you're a little bit more behind the wheel. <laughs> like, yeah, right. you know, like you're like, I really, I've really been kind of trying to get into a space where I'm less behind the wheel in my GMing um, as far as like making it more of a collaborative space. And again, that's all about the, the having the right group, right? But having that collaborative space and doing stuff is, is fantastic. Like, I love Vamp Man. I love creating worlds. I mean, I, there are a few things that get me more hot than crushing spirits. Crushing spirits. <laughs> and and make, <laughs> making my players cry. Crying I is make a reaction. Them, but I want to make them cry <laughs> I, for legitimate reasons. Um, right. And I like creating, like, I like to create, I like the low, like, like Matt Colville has a bunch of videos about, like, you can either do lore or you can do something that people actually give a shit about because nobody cares. None of your players, none of your players care about the 55 pages of lore you wrote about the random ass town that they spent a day in. No one cares. If it doesn't see table time, it doesn't matter. I love the lore, but the real kick is getting that lore out. Like, because if you can't get it out, it doesn't mean anything, right? And I think, like, I love, like, for me, I guess, I, I guess for me, long story short, I, you know, I'll ramble. Long story short, I like, I like <laughs> the craft of it. I'm really interested in like learning how we do, what we do, how we tell these stories, and how to get better at it. I mean, you know, yeah. I have a. I have a, a an education background, <laughs> like <laughs> that's kind of been my thing for far too long. Um, but yeah, it's super fun. I I like both, but I like playing when it's great, and I always like DMing. Man, all I know is playing. I don't know DMing. So we're I've never gonna DM'd. get you yep. in the DM it's chair. It's gonna happen. With Mork Bork, you're gonna run us yeah. through Mork Bork. Maybe Dude, everyone's maybe gonna day. die like six times in the first session. That'd be maybe fun. one day I'll get the guts up to run a one shot or something. Hell yeah! And then it'll turn into a weekly homebrew. That's right. <laughs> I don't you think so. Know. You never know. I would say, Van. What about you, Dave? I I personally. I like playing if it's if it is a really fun group. I I get I will get disconnected f as a player if I don't feel that same buzz that I feel as a DM. I think that is the one thing when you when you start to DM is that because it is such a buzz to 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 um to be the person that brings the group together. Um, yeah. it's like, I love synergy. I love being, and I, I thrive in sort of that, the nexus, you know, whatever that, that ley line nexus is of synergy. I like being in there. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm a great player when I'm in one, a group that's like that. And I feel that same buzz. But I, I think I like right now I like DMing more because in a little bit different from Chad, I, I like the, I don't go like 30 pages of lore for a throwaway town, but I, I like having, I like the world building. I like having the lore. I like developing the lore. And then if I never use it, I'm not going to shove it down my player's throats, but it's there if they ask about it and I can go to mm -hmm. it. And I don't have, I don't have to wing. I, I don't mind, you know, um, improv. I love I, that's become, I used to be scared of improv when I first started DMing <laughs> big time. And I would, I would over prepare for sure. Now I, I, I like improv, but I also like being able to improv with elements that I've already thought about mm -hmm. so that I'm not having to develop the ideas on the spot. I can play with ideas that I've already created. 
or or someone else has created right. that I've that I've pulled from because there's a you know Greyhawk is a great example. There's tons of uh, fan generated content. There's there's a lot of official you know published content. There's just so much to play with. Um, so I I like that part. But you know I'm having a lot of fun playing in in Chad's game Midwinter Keening. I like the character that I'm playing. I like you know we can we can talk about that some other time. But I I like now in my in my phase of of role playing games i liked the the inner the inner journey the introspective mm-hmm. journey the you know the uh, right now i'm de- i'm i'm role playing out a, like a coming of age sort of thing and i'm i'm really i like that aspect um <clears throat> but yeah it's been fun this has been a great group to be the dm for it's been an honor and it hopefully it continues for a long time it's been super fun well that's one thing i you know once i got into dnd you know, last March, you know, I've been playing <laughs> for a little over a year, year ago. Now. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. but it's prompted me to go online and watch a lot of videos. And that's one of the things I've seen is like, you know, don't just DM, like play the games. Mm-hmm. Like there's, you discover things like moving from player to DM that you might not realize if you just are always the DM or are always the player, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And, well, and the other thing too, I think uh, a lot of people out there would agree, playing other systems mm. is super informative. That's uh, been a lot of. Know. That's been really interesting. Mm-hmm. I've yeah. had a lot of fun playing index card RPG games with Chad, yep. sort of introducing those to us and sort of leading the charge on that aspect of the guild stuff. That's been super fun. So highly recommend. Yeah, I think. The biggest thing, I think the biggest thing I would say is when you become a DM, like to use critical role as a metaphor, like before you're a DM, you're like, I want to be Matt Mercer. I want to tell stories like Matt Mercer. I want to do the things that he does. And he's great. Don't get me wrong. He's fantastic. Yeah. But I think once you become a DM, you realize that you need to be Travis Willingham like you need like he is everyone in that group's biggest fan like when somebody does something awesome he's the first one losing his goddamn mind about yeah. it that's a and good way that to dude pumps it. me up so much yeah. like yeah like that's the bi- like that's the big thing yeah d- and don't be sam regal I mean, you know, <laughs> always be sam regal no. don't let anyone tell you otherwise there, no. there's be sam regal role. Dress up with a super weird. Yeah. <laughs> There's a time and a place. I haven't Sam seen Regal. season two yet. I'm <laughs> behind. But there's something to be said yeah. for the wild card, man. Right. There's Sam something is so to be far said. beyond a wild card. It's oh, yeah, I know. Funny. He's like the wild card's role model. You know he what is. I mean? Like, he he, so it's like, I feel like oh. our our wild card is um, um, Kirk. Yeah. You know, Byron. Byron, um, because he does some unexpected shit that I just don't. I impulsive. don't. Impulsive. He can be impulsive. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I and I feel I feel like that adds to it. Like if he wasn't doing that, then you know, like you need a little bit of that. Yeah, there's been yeah. some great great moments from that. <laughs> there have been. Yeah. <laughs> Falling asleep. I'm on not. Watches. Look, look, look. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not a Sam Regal hater. I'm just saying. He, no, he, he, no. He likes to. He likes to troll. He likes to troll his yeah. own his own group. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, they do have a great production crew, which is awesome. We do not. Our production crew is us. So, um, that's true. Yep. We do, we do it all. And, uh, I don't see that ever, ever changing. We're not, (laughs) not, we're not, we're not trying to, uh, to, to do what critical role is doing or anybody else. We're just trying to have a good time. No. Um, I would like to get, I would like to get to a blue box level. That'd be fun. Oh, those guys are awesome. Yeah. I would like to get to a level where somebody else can tweet for us. If anybody true. wants, yes. if anybody wants to run our Twitter, let us yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm running out of time for Twitter, but anyways, um, any other questions out there? Our night, our nightbot says that we have emotes, which we do. So go ahead and we subscribe, do, and, and you'll get them. Um, let's see. If, if you subscribe, it helps us to do stuff. And, you know, get a hold of products maybe that will 
put towards uh, one shots. Um, mm-hmm. You know, maybe full campaigns. Mm-hmm. Uh, get cool visual assets um, that we'll use in the game. You know, uh, maps or uh, tokens or make new uh, overlays. One thing I want to talk about briefly is, man, doing this, ah, making overlays is uh, a little satisfying. It's fun. Yeah. It's a little, it is satisfying to do that. Um, It's hard, and it's a lot of work, though. (laughs) Um, All uh, right. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's we got, we got a few additional people, so maybe just. Oh, um, we did? Yeah, I think so. So if for those of you that are additionals, thanks for stopping by. We're we're sort of at the point now where we're just asking you guys for questions. <laughs> so uh fire off some questions. Let's go. Rapid fire Q and A. Let's hear it. Or um just a reminder about the um the giveaway. Yeah, tell sure, us about we the have giveaway. Our giveaway. Tell us I don't know about ended. it. Oh, I, I already uh, forgot we... it. Oh, okay. I can do it. I'll do it. I'll do it this time. Yeah, you do it this time. Yeah. So, uh, CZRPG, our official sponsor for uh, this stream, um, has uh, generously uh, uh, given us a giveaway product, which is all about boats. <laughs> it's. Uh, it's just... I'm gonna. We we're, we'll. Don't worry. We'll we'll fix that in post. All about that. Uh, it's all, it's all, about, all about boats. The ultimate uh, naval it's map a, pack. That's a awesome set of boat tokens and, and uh, different uh, sea related accoutrement for your game. If you enter yeah. the CZ RPG, I'm sorry, Christian. If I'm say, this, your say this word right here. CZ RPG is uh, is oh, the geez. code. He's got notes. It's not I focusing mean. on that. Your camera's, it's focusing on your face. Cover your face. <laughs> oh, just, yeah, oh, it's too fuzzy. Uh, Say that word right there. Oh, God, I can't, I can't read that. It's not working. Uh, but you can win a cool PDF product that CZRPG has put out. Um, it, it's a bunch of boat and ship related and ocean related stuff. It's really cool. Um, hey, CZRPG will get you in the drawing. We'll, Probably soon, hopefully, for the love of God, we, we will do the giveaway and sign off for the evening. But uh, yeah, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask us. Free D and D stuff. There's oh, nothing better. What to my audio. Oh, there it is. You're still with us. Okay, I had just turned my my own slider. My headset has a manual. I can do game or or audio track, and sometimes if you bump it, it'll go one way or the other. Anyway. Anyways, here we are. Yeah, yep, we're at the end of the stream. We've run out of things to talk about, which is highly we could just unusual. And just like come up with some more stuff. I could oh. see it. <laughs> here's a question. Here's a you know what? Since we got a little bit of space, here's a question for yeah. you, the viewer who is watching. Like Vamp Wickman, you've been you've been around for a little while. Um, anyone who's anyone who's even Christian, you're around. Uh, what kind of stuff would you like to see us do? Like as a one shot, is there a game system or something that question. you would um, like to see us do? Here's a uh, also Christian just has a question. Uh, about what led us to doing Ghost of Salt Marsh. Well, so here, so I, I have always wanted to do a, like a pirate themed game. So for me, it was when, when the book came out, Ghost of Salt Marsh, I bought it right away. And I, and honestly, I loved the, the graphic on the cover um Mm -hmm. is so amazing it it got me so fired up um and when when i started the superior adventurers guild that the 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 first incarnation of it before it was anything really other than just a facebook group of friends that was the that was the um like the image on the banner just because i love it it's so cool Mm -hmm. but 
we didn't play it for a long time. And then when the pandemic hit, I was like, I'm going to do, I'm going to start a one shot. I just want to do a one shot pirate based nautical themed thing. I'm going to just do the one adventure, you know, the, um, salvage operation, like we talked about earlier and just go for it. And then it just, it was too much fun. And it, and the, Mm -hmm. and the group was too, too much fun to play with. And it just, it spiraled, but it was really just, I want to, I want to play a pirate based theme. I bought the book and now I want to use it. And I had the opportunity with the pandemic and yeah, that was it. It was pretty also, simple. Also, Nightbot has reminded me that it is called the Ultimate Naval Map Pack. Yeah, Ultimate. Nightbot. Hey, thank you, Nightbot. Ultimate <laughs> Naval Map Pack. No. Yeah, I, I wanted it like when it came out, when they, when Wizards first announced Ghost of Saltmarsh, I was like, yeah, this sounds cool. Because I'm always interested in things that are like callbacks or like kind of old school stuff. Like, I was because I that's what I grew up playing, right? And so this was like something that was really cool. I had wanted to do it. I own, I don't remember, I don't think I bought it. I think I bought it after you started running it. I don't know that I owned it right away when we were playing it, but I, I eventually got it. Nope, that's not true. Like I had it before that, but yeah, I hadn't I really looked at it. Um, yeah, it's cool. It's fun. It's been great. It is true, though, that many people's criticism of this book is true. There's no vote stuff in it. <laughs> there's, really? There's, no, oh, yeah. Like, like, I don't own the book. Like, so I'm, I, like I really... there's maybe like 5% of, 5% of the actual adventures in the thing are boat-related. Yeah, oh, wow. I mean, there there They're are like, random, there are random are tables. Like there's like yeah. random encounter tables and stuff that are super helpful, but it doesn't. There's no written adventure that's like a uh, a ship based adventure. Yeah, it's just like a good reason. portion of the book. There's a good section of the book that's about running a crew, running a ship, some cool like ad, uh, adventure locations. Like the undersea stuff at the back of the book seems really interesting, but none of that is in any of the adventures. Well, and luckily we've got uh, CZRPG working on encounters in Saltmarsh, so my thought is that there'll probably be some some nautical oh, encounters yeah. there. There's so, so much there. There's so much fun. there. Yep. Yep. It's uh, it's been fun, and I'm glad we did. I'm glad we ran that one shot. That season one was was the hook for me. For sure. Yeah. So, and that's now we're, I don't know, we're, we're, oh, we're 20, man. are we 22 episodes into season three? And there were 27 episodes in season two and there were six episodes or seven episodes in the first season. So that gives you an yeah. idea of the level of excitement and interest from our group. Yeah. Yeah. No, Dave, I remember at that point when you were like, do you want to keep playing? And I was like, fuck yeah, I want to keep playing. I was like, yeah, let's do this. Like, We're playing D&D, I was dude. Hooked, yeah. Man. I was yeah. like, yeah, I want to keep doing this every week. Let's do it. Oh, yeah. yeah I'm glad we it's did. Great. I'm glad we're doing it still. And season two, like, exploded. Yeah. We'll talk so about maybe that. we'll do a season two recap at some point. With, yeah. This was pretty with, fun. Uh, Mike yeah. on. I don't know what with the... With Byron. What... I don't know what TBD 102 is is thinking about our discussion, but I uh, I'm glad that he or she. I'm is surprised here. she's still up. You know what? It's nice that you made it. We appreciate you. Uh, thanks for your support. Thanks for letting Andy play with us. We yeah. that's great. We do appreciate it. It's a lot of fun. It and it has been as I mentioned earlier. It's been like a great way to reconnect. It's been therapeutic. It's been. Mm-hmm you know, a creative outlet. There's a lot of great reasons to support this type of storytelling. And, you know, I mean, we could all be playing poker, you know, once a week, nope. but <laughs> three nights, that's, you know, nope. that's just, <laughs> how, how many nights? Okay. Three nights a week. Right, right now it's up to three nights a week from zero. How, how many so. games are you in? <laughs> uh, you might, I mean, you, have a pro- you might have a problem, dude. You're, You're playing three, three your, nights of poker. Guys. Three, three <laughs> poker nights a week. Look, no. are these like are you're you my bad influences, right? Are you Look, spending no, no. Are like are you are you are you gambling? No, but like, he is could this, be. Is this poker for money? No, no, I'm not gambling. Okay. Oh, um Look, he could be playing. He could be like playing slot machines three nights a week. We're not, right. you know, we're just yep. we're having a few I'm drinks. Not, we're telling I'm stories. Not judging. 
<laughs> I've definitely spent. I've definitely spent. I've I've played some poker. I've spent more on RPG products than I've ever spent on poker. Yeah. You know why I, do I have the Volo's Guide to Monsters? Like, why do I own that? I don't know. Because it's you don't even own. own dice, dude. <laughs> <laughs> How many decks of cards do you own? <laughs> well, I bought you know the story. I, I, I bought the story engine. I bought I have, that I, one. That's pretty sweet. I have an idea. Yeah. I think I've that if if we get to if we can get up to let's say I don't know. 300 followers on Twitch. We will do a spouses and girlfriends episode. Part we'll do a partners episode. All right. Where we get Chuck. folks who may or may not be familiar with what D&D even is and I'm I'm looking at you TBD 102. <laughs> is that your wife? Yes. We <laughs> My wife we, is in the chat. And she's into it. We will do we're going to do a partners a partner's one shot. That is my, that is my, I will run it. It, it is my, uh, pledge. If we can hit 300 followers, we will put together a one shot for partners. And that goes for people who have played. Exactly. Yeah. We're, nice. We will, yeah. we will near it totally. out. Yeah. That'll be Dave fun. will run it. Andy and I will be in the chat. Heckling our partners. There you go. There you go. Partners, Most likely the other way around, shot. but yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. we can. Uh, we can start. We can start earlier. No problem. <laughs> Andy, will watch. Maybe he'll be on the weekend, weekend or something. Yeah. 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 And look, in a couple years, I'll I'll run if we can get up to let's say a thousand viewers. Yep. I will run a kids game for all the kids. Hey. And we'll kids, do a oh, we'll do a I, kids friendly D and D game. One of my daughter's um, friends loves D and D. Like we have a there's something called Game Lab here in Brooklyn. It's like a um, kind of a local business that runs like in store gaming. But since the pandemic, they've had to do like a lot of outdoor stuff. But they play D and D with the kids, and it's pretty cool. And they've been about. keep they've been keep doing like outdoor stuff still. Yeah, even in, ah. even indoor, they like they've um been on top of like renovating their spaces to like increase like ventilation and stuff like that. Sure. That's awesome. Yeah, ah, that's pretty that's cool. fantastic. Yeah, my oh, niece man. is super into dragons, and like she's she'll tell me stories about these dragons that she's friends with and all this stuff. she's eight eight and a half and i'm like she's she's narrating a D uh story to me right now yeah. no it's like you know, i'm like she yeah. would she would love this you know obviously you have to you have to tone down certain elements of of the game you know yeah. but there there's a way there are ways to do it i would be happy to do that so Spread the word. If we can get to is is a thousand yeah. even possible? A thousand. If we get I thought to it was three hundred. <laughs> I think it was three hundred for the spouse, the partners. Game. Maybe, let, maybe let's do let's do five hundred. Five hundred for kids. Okay, five five hundred followers. Five hundred uh, for the kids and three hundred for the partners. We will make that happen. Oh, yeah. All right. If we stay on much longer, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be promising way too much. So <laughs> yeah, I know. Let's do this. We're gonna, we're gonna make D and D great again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Everybody who's watching, is anybody still here? Okay, yeah. There's, there's a couple people. Make sure that you type this this these sequence this sequence of letters into the chat. C Z R P G. That will enter you to win. The Ultimate Naval Map Pack by our friend Christian and his team at CZRPG. Check them out at CZRPG.com. There we go. TBD102 is going to win some the Ultimate Naval Map Pack. I Can't say it. that because if that happens, it'll be weird. Okay, well, she's <laughs> she's entered to win. It's totally random. Yes. Yeah, it is totally it's random. random. It's random. To be Although, fair, when the, the few times when Vamp Wickman has won, it's been like Vamp, Vamp Wickman, Wickman always might wins. win. That's the thing. Yeah. Vamp Wickman has won. What the hell? He's won multiple. Uh, times. You know what? He's a lucky. He's a lucky guy. We're getting there. Yep. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna do a countdown. Okay. Okay. And then we're gonna do it away. Ready? Yeah. Five, four. Hey, cat. What are you doing? Go away. Three, two, one. Ah.
a vamp wickman <laughs> yeah it pays to follow it pays to follow it pays, it pays wow. to subscribe and follow oh vamp you know how this works i will send you uh, i will send you a link uh with the <laughs> download for the ultimate naval map pack congratulations vamp we appreciate you thanks for being here week in week out uh tb102 next time we're pulling for you um thanks for supporting andy and his addiction his new addiction she doesn't addiction. need a map pack she doesn't need a map pack she, you don't know that She's she's in she's getting into it. She'll be probably DMing yeah. the next campaign. Oh. All right. Well, <laughs> folks, everyone who's still here, thank you. Yeah, we appreciate. If you're watching, uh, if, you're watching, if you've made it this far to the stream and you're watching this on the VOD, ooh, wow, thank that's you something. so much. That's something. <laughs> Thanks a lot, everybody. We appreciate you guys. Thanks to CZRPG, our sponsor for the stream. Don't forget to join us tomorrow night for midwinter keenan andy will be oh, there yeah. I'll, I'll be, be there. there chad better be there since you he's know, running the there. game uh there's a fight to be had and some uh some questions to be answered in the wonderful world of Sveeland. so um thank you very much everybody we are honored at your support we'll see you next time bye Good night. <laughs>